How's it going? Welcome to my so-called life. Technical difficulties or not, let me know if you can hear me. I'm going to have to... Oh, I can hear an echo. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to have to turn the, this computer off for a second while it updates because Apple is an awful company that forces you to do things. And while, yes, I want to leave because you can't handle StreamYards. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome to my so-called calamity. Let me see if I can unplug. Yay! Hello, Joy. Hello, hello. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm glad I did the update on this computer. I hope everyone's doing well. You're getting the, um, we're breaking the fourth wall here in the house of sewing. <laughs> it's um, been a crazy day. I'm going to eventually fix this. Let me see if I can I don't know if the mic will go that far oh, of course the software to update is available you stupid computer you know this is the beautiful thing about live anything is that um, oh password <laughs> ha I have all kinds of amazing things planned for this evening. Um, you know what? I can walk around. Let me see if I unplug that. Do you still work? Let me unplug the HDMI. Oh, we can move around. I'm not trying to give you vertigo, but I'm going to fix my computer. Oh, there we go. We're at a more familiar angle. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, oh, so I'm working on my um, $17 microphone that I recently purchased. I'm waiting for my computer to um, update itself, which I don't know if it is or not. But now I think I can go in the closet. <laughs> Okay, good. The computer is restarting. How's it going? Welcome to my so-called life. Like I say, um, technical difficulties or not, I want to welcome everybody who's here, everybody who's made it, anyone who watches this in the future, because in a minute or two, I'm going to be able to fix this problem. Yay. Hello, Joy. Hello, hello. AOL is the worst. I won't trust it. You know, I thought I had enough of those discs, and I thought I had enough time, but here we are. <laughs> you know, these mic stands come in handy, but they're not made for walking around. But let's see if I could... Do you know what's so funny? All day long, I was griping about how I couldn't get a signal in the closet. Let's find out if I can. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Oh, do I get a signal in here? Whoop, oh, 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 got the cord. <laughs> this is like Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm creeping in the dark. Oh, this is hilarious. There we go. Look at that. It works in here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I've really been cleaning in here, and I'm actually proud of what I accomplished. Beautiful. Awesome. I'll be dropping in and out tonight. Hopefully I'll be getting some sleep before my early morning wake up. What are you doing tomorrow, Butterfly? I know it's actually crazy in here. Oh, 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 oh. Am I losing my signal? Oh. 
<laughs> Let me go back in the room because I'm definitely losing my signal. Okay. Let me know if you could hear me. Oh, there we go. I am slowly getting my signal back. <laughs> That stinks. I have to basically be sitting on top of the Wi-Fi for this to work, but that's okay. Thank you. I've really been cleaning in there. I've really been trying to um, handle that room. I have. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. A closet of crazy clothes. Yeah, I will inform the mayor. <laughs> I've, I've really improved in that room. It's kind of ticks me off that I don't get a Wi-Fi signal in there. I was going to call Spectrum, and it's so funny. When my computer wasn't working, I was like, Spectrum is total Wrath and Con scream. But really what it is is um, this computer needed an update. I didn't do it or notice it. And then I don't get a signal in my closet. I'm going to sew along for our sewing guild. We're making seasonal wall hangers. Awesome. <laughs> I have to update my computer. I'm so mad. Do you see that? Do you see that? <laughs> and I do have a bunker. And I'm right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hello, Mona. Great to see you. Great to see you. Do you know... Um, calamity always happens on live anything, and my computer needed an update, and I did not notice. So, in the middle of this stream, it'll go back to looking how it normally does, but <laughs> this is my ultra backup computer. There's a lot of clothing in that room. What do you see? The bedroom closet for more clothes? <laughs> Well, one of the reasons I built that room up was so nobody could ever ask to live here. <laughs> because um that that is the one room where somebody be like oh can i live in your house no <laughs> yay hello hello i have all kinds of sewing planned when this computer reboots and lets me back in <laughs> that really stinks that i couldn't do the um angle that i wanted to let's see if i Oh, and yes, this is a room of, <laughs> and shout out to all the YouTubers that have giant box lights like I do. <laughs> Yay. Hello, Mona. Hello. Hello. Great to see you. Great to see you. Yay. I, that was the goal was to get to the chair. So the, I, I'm glad that I got to the chair. Probably a spirit. That loves mad cloaks is blocking your signal. <laughs> oh, he's got the spirit of a young Victorian child. He has to keep it on the working the machine, no matter no matter what. Absolutely. <laughs> Yay! Hello, hello, polish and assembled. Yay! I do, I do feel like um, if ever, anybody ever watched WKRP in Cincinnati, the Thanksgiving episode is one of the greatest episodes in television history. I'm not going to give it away, but I feel like live from WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> Yay, hello, hello. This is sewing live at five. Do you know, I'm not even mad because... Uh, I knew that this was going to happen. Let's see. Oh, that's not my password. Oh, oh, not a fan of you right now. Not a fan of you either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You know, computers are so much fun when they completely and utterly bonk on you. Let's see if it says notification. Okay. Okay. I should be able to click into my other computer. We'll see what happens. Hello, hello. Do you know what? Like I said earlier, this is the thing about going live. It's not always going to be pretty. 
or work. But okay, it says this this machine is up to date. How come this seventeen dollar microphone just came through clutch when it needed to? Streamyard, I you know what the funny thing is? This thing was so weak. I knew that there was something wrong. So we'll see if it's still weak or if. Okay, we're gonna mute you for a second. Oh, give me one quick second. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to. All right, so let me know if you hear an unreal amount of feedback. Let's see. Hi. <laughs> Only took 15 minutes. You know what? That update actually um, came a lot faster than I thought it would. Give me one quick second. Oh, what a mess. Hi, welcome to my so-called mess. It's uh, under construction in here. I'm nothing but monitor and HDMI cables and sewing machines. I hope everybody's having a great Monday night. What will go wrong? No, what can go wrong will go wrong. And that is the house of sewing. I hope everybody's well. Thank you for everybody who stuck with me. Dog, um, I'm going to be going through clothes again later this evening. So I might have a ton for you. It's the main broadcast machine coming back up. No, what happened is, is that this machine needed an update and I didn't notice. Apple slows its technology down on purpose. I didn't know what was wrong at first, but then when I figured it out, it, it took me a second. So here we are. All spirits are the Victorian children. It's strange that people have never seen black cavemen or, or animal ghosts as if Christianity may be racist. Hmm. Or a person wrapped in chains. Hmm. 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 Interesting. <laughs> oh man, we really got a tour. I think that's awesome that I got somewhat of a signal in the closet. Um, I'm really making it um room in there, and I'm really coming along, and I actually feel accomplished with that. <laughs> oh man, that was a mile that i just ran but before we get to any of the fun stuff do i or all my my lights are not on this program is for entertainment purposes only and its content is not intended to malign any religion lack thereof race company individual or wigs all opinions expressed by my so-called life and program participants are solely their personal views and do not reflect the opinion of every human being on planet earth i hope everybody has a great evening ah i'm meh the pills i was taking for my disease quit working well so so now i'm on a new shot and i have to get every week hopefully this works for me i hope you feel better and i hope they find out what you need it's going to change your life when they do, <laughs> when they finally figure out what you need. But we're here for you, Kilroy. So it's a, it's a meh Monday, but we're going to make it better. <laughs> My computer bonked. And Kilroy is reminding all of us what's important. Oh, my computer is really. <laughs> oh, man. So. Today has been a crazy day. Today's the first day of spring break, and it feels like it. You know, I love illustrating of how much my boots make me tall. So this is me with my boots on, and this is me without my boots on. Oh, it's, it's quite a difference, quite a huge difference. 
Oh, feels good to be my height again. I sure hope so, Kilroy. You're, you're in our thoughts. Absolutely. We are here for you, Kilroy. I hope you feel better. I hope they do something. Nowadays, it's incurable. <clears throat> if I disappear and Storm's here, I absolutely am sorry, Kilroy. But I'll be here with nothing but um, bad advice and snarky jokes and tons of sewing. <clears throat> if I disappear, Storm's here. Yikes. Do you know, it's been crazy weather everywhere. <laughs> I see again. I'm not gonna complain about the weather here because it's um, it was hot today, and then it was like raining and hot. It was like Florida weather, better than it was even 30 years ago, though. Back then, just your spleen said good luck. <clears throat> oh man. Okay. Oh. <sighs> So, I know that everybody had an opinion on um, me. Well, on Matrix 4. You know, I watched it the other night and I actually really liked it. <laughs> oh, and before I go off about the Matrix, right now, I decided to change it up a little bit. And I'm making, well, I will be making this evening. This is McCall's pattern, L9532. I've made this quite a few times, but I haven't made it lately. So it's definitely something that I'm going to be working on. <clears throat> a lot of people had opinions about the movie, and I'm actually really surprised. it. I liked it. Maybe I'm easy entertained. Maybe I needed closure. <laughs> but I love the fourth Matrix. And, you know, I think we, um, as people, we put too much uh, behind everything nowadays, you know, and it was just a movie, but I absolutely loved the movie. I'm not into those kind of movies. I I'm, you know, I'm a sci-fi geek so much that I bought Elf. And yes, Elf is sci-fi, because if you have an alien living at your house, that is science fiction. <laughs> Even if it's a nice one, you're finally going to make a regular <laughs> And the funny thing is, I'm making it like this material comes from the oopsies. And I'm, it, it reminds me of like those old cheetah shirts. The, sh the shirt your mom would make you wear. <laughs> or the shirt with the alligator on it. <laughs> so I'm going to pull that together in a minute. 4 a.m. here. Falling asleep, Will Crab. From now, I bid you all good night. Have a great night, dog. Thank you so much for stopping by. I will be going through another giant crop of clothes this evening. Well, later. It's still extremely early right now. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Do you know what's funny? I thought um, with my son being on vacation, I'd have all this time. And I had less time today. <laughs> that's how things work out so after this week i'm gonna need a vacation from the vacation oh let's see spectrum is awful <laughs> oh how awful was that so what's everybody doing this evening what are you sewing what's going on mona is hunkering down for the storm Yikes, I hope you're safe. I hope Kilroy, I hope you feel better. How's everyone doing? Today has definitely been a, a Monday. I had a great time on Critically Drinking with Yella and, and Rashawn and Greg Bryant. I had a great time. Will's ADD is annoying. The guy has never read through a full post. <laughs> well, you know, I skim. I skim. I'm taking cliff notes. <laughs> that's why i don't understand going on big trips for vacation you stress yourself out and then after the vacation you need another vacation thank you where are my glasses <laughs> oh well maybe if i well i'm sitting too close for my glasses <laughs> I do, though. I do. It takes a minute. When I put my glasses on, it takes a minute for my eyes to adjust because I'm so used to walking around without my glasses on. <clears throat> <laughs> Do 
Yes, I am making a regular shirt. I'm going to go crazy on the collar like I always do. But I'm kind of kind of making an experiment with this. I'm going to, um, this shirt is made to be open. I'm going to keep it closed. I'm going full long sleeve alligator or cheetah or whatever brand that was. <laughs> it's the material that reminds me of that shirt that your mom would always make you wear to church as a kid. I, but I absolutely love working with this because it's perfect for the serger. Lately, I've been working with all kinds of crazy material. So it's good to um, every once in a while make a regular shirt. <laughs> but we'll see how this ends up. <clears throat> And eventually this evening, I will put my glasses on. And <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not going to oopsie shame myself. Every week I do this, the pile may or may not have grown, has grown. It doesn't matter. I make stuff out of this. <laughs> because I'm not sitting at my desk. You can't see the sheer volume of oopsies I have in this corner. But it's a few. It's a few. <laughs> uh. <laughs> the oopsie, the oopsie pile has grown just a little bit. <laughs> it's because last weekend I went to um, the. You know what? It's so sad to somebody who's not from America. Like we have regular WalMarts, and then we have mega WalMarts, and then we have I don't know. And there's one by my house that is so huge. It's the equivalent of three different Walmarts. And I went in there and I'm like, I don't know why. I was like, oh, they won't have oopsies here. It was oopsie heaven. <laughs> Every mistake anyone had ever made at that store was sitting there. And I was like, oh, why? Right when I thought they were, <laughs> why when I thought, I was getting out. They pulled me right back in. <laughs> to quote the worst Godfather movie of all time. We can never understand a punchline. Skimming across my quick wit and banter with your, with your frame and reference makes me some sort of psychotic hater. It's just I am going at 100 miles an hour. Oopsies Anonymous. Get out the ashtrays and the styrofoam coffee. I'll hang out with you. If you have if you have styrofoam uh, styrofoam coffee and ashtrays, I'll hang out with you. Regular Walmart, Super Walmart, Sam's Club. <laughs> I think it's just the plot of land that this particular one was built on, and I avoid it because they always have the furry fabric. They have everything I need. But this weekend, I was on the hunt for DVD players, Blu-ray players, and I'm kind of upgrading this room and bringing it back to where it should be. <laughs> Which reminds me, which one is this? Is it okay? That's the DVD player. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello. Oh, I don't have my volume on. Hold on. Thank oh, you so much. I did my best, but I sorry I left you in the lurch for a little bit while you were struggling. I can tread in water okay. for a while. How are you? I'm all right. I'm gonna turn some other things <sighs> on. I refuse to even step foot <laughs> into Costco because of the movie Idiocracy. Are you a Costco person? Water? Um, I, I mean, not. I don't need to buy things by the gross, so <laughs> um, not really. Like nothing against Costco, it just doesn't. It doesn't work with my shopping needs. I love it because they feed you. Like you can <laughs> walk around. At least the one by my house, they hook you up. <laughs> Even my my son made a comment how we never leave there hungry. Let's just put it that way. Do they sell the oopsies at a discount? Um, it depends. If it's a factory oopsie, no. But if they made the mistake there, yes. And it's always the ugliest print, and I always buy it. <laughs> A look of paint would do the room wonders. <laughs> Which room are we painting? Are you going to paint your closet? I'm so mad at Spectrum right now. Yay. Hello. 
I just want to show off my progress and I can't get a signal in there to save myself. Boo and hiss. And I didn't want to call him because I was already like, you saw what happened last time when I called Spectrum. And then this happened with my computer and I was Spectrum. It was my real, I did a, a Wrath of Khan scream. <laughs> my neighbors think that Khan is coming or something. I, oh. Kind of. Because otherwise, like all your money also is tied up in, and and where do you put it? Where do you put 800 rolls of toilet paper, 600 rolls of paper towels, eight lasagnas? I mean. <laughs> True story. Last week, I went to the Walmart by my house to buy a thing of Stouffer's macaroni. The store I usually go to is like a mile the walmart is like less than half a mile so i went to walmart their family size feeds 15. oh goodness they only sell that i've never i i haven't gone to costco in a while so i don't know if they have that size at costco they don't have that at the store i normally go to it's the <laughs> one that it, it you know it says it serves eight but isaiah and i literally cut it in half and get, get four <laughs> you know Oh my God, that would be a, a chore to bait. <laughs> we have a bulk buying in the UK, but you need to have a business to shop in them. I buy bulk on Amazon. You know what's so funny? I was shocked when they when I found out they don't sell that giant thing of goldfish in Canada. I was shocked. The like half gallon jug or carton? Good gracious. <laughs> I, when I feel peckish, I need a box the size of my head. <laughs> That's what I need. I'm going to build a pantry. We know you lived through 2020. You know where to put it. Absolutely. I love the Stouffer's. I live for that stuff. I absolutely love it. But that's, uh, I tried to back away from it because that's one of the culprits that helped me gain 50 pounds during the pandemic. Uh, yeah. Then I started making my own and adding like four different types of cheese. It, it got mm, bad. Mm, <laughs> mm. I've been cleaning out the garage and I fished out a coat that I had wanted to show this like clothing fashion group. And I tried the coat on just for giggles. And I mean, this coat was small when I got it because I was not at my ideal weight. But now I'm really not at my ideal weight. And the coat, you know, it goes on. It would make a, a nice duster, but there's no way I'm going to put the zipper together. <laughs> you know what's so funny? I'm going to get the other one. But you and I are wonder twins. See, this is why you're the greatest <laughs> co-host of all time. <laughs> Let me get the other shirt. Two of my Harley shirts do not necessarily fit me anymore. Two of them. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm working on it. It's going the right direction, but it's a slow process. And I'm just, I don't have the wherewithal to do any drastic measures right now. They're both in here. We are Wonder Twins because I screamed, are you kidding me? <laughs> The party pans serves either a party or one Kilroy. Uh, see, but I'm not six and a half feet tall. It's awful. I don't get to eat nearly as much as I would enjoy eating. You're um, you're you just kind of okay. You're in the beginning of robotic. Hmm. Huh. Kit Kat cereal. Oh dear. See, if they had that when I was a kid, yikes! I would. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. You can tell me all about it. I'm talking cargo ship container. Well, here in America, we have places where you can buy outrageous amounts of things. But I have places to store them. Like when I buy toilet paper and stuff, I buy the huge bag, the, the box that's bigger than my cart. Because I don't want to come back. And that used to be normal pre, uh, pre-plague. pre if they had that where you, where you were where you were as a kid, we'd have to watch you put your dentures in every morning. 
I'm almost there. My like for real. Um, my family has the worst worst teeth. The wor worst teeth. And if you ever smoked, the teeth is even worse. So this first one didn't fit. This. Is happier than a pig in fill in the blank. This is from Canoga Park, California. It doesn't fit me anymore. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then this, I actually went there. This was on that weird Saskatoon trip I always talk about, but I got this. I got this in Detroit, Michigan. And it doesn't fit me anymore because I used to be this size. <laughs> Biker Bob Sport Vita. <laughs> That's it. We have to be more serious about our slimming regimens. Summer's a coming. It is. And see, that's why I'm like, oh, you know, because I'm feeling my oats because I've been working out a lot lately. But I guess I'm bulking up. <laughs> <sighs> see, all my summer pants and, and shorts, shorts, goodness, are like size two. I am not a size two. I don't know if anyone noticed, but. Yeah. Let me start pulling my pins. <laughs> oh. I couldn't believe. Should I get my shirts first? I think I should. What are you? What are we gathering? What's going on? We purpose the graphics on another shirt or. <laughs> my problem is, and no one wants to hear this because I'm a man. My weight goes up and down so much. I keep those because maybe I might be back to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I still have size two pants. It's aspirational. It's motivation. <laughs> Joy with the comment of the evening so far. <laughs> or lose weight. You sound like my mom. <laughs> Do something about it. I haven't worn shorts since I was 14 or so. Uh, cargo shorts, maybe some Daisy Dukes, depending on, you know. You never know what mood you're in. Maybe some like little, like some dove shorts from the 80s. Come on now. Two <laughs> colors on each leg and opposite. That's what I want to make. Wait, well, hold on. I just cannot say them properly. They called Karachi pants. The AC Slater cut. Oh, they were called something. They were denim, but they were cut a certain way in the 80s. Um pants or yeah, because you didn't react i probably said it wrong <laughs> <laughs> but there's a certain style um i understand it's hard because you know you still have to eat it's not like you can just quit eating so you have to try and like do something healthy like see spinach and vegetables on my sandwich it's, to be super boring, my diet, my dietary requirements force me to eat healthy. <laughs> Says the man with a half gallon of goldfish crackers. You got to put chili fries in there somewhere. You're just not. <laughs> Sorry, or you're just not. Like... <laughs> if I wore Daisy Dukes, that'd be against the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm the only one here with a blue wrench. Yeah. Oh, dog, I'll give you. <laughs> what? Sorry, dog. Here, here we go. There we go. Bam. Hey, Alibaba. How's it going? How's it going? Hey, Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> are you talking about my t-shirt? Hi, Mama. Uh, Hey, Mona, how's it going? How's it going? Great to see you. Oh, the Harley shirts. I, you know, I collect Harley shirts and there's only one where I didn't go on that one, one particular trip, but every Harley shirt that I have, I actually went to the store and purchased them. So they they all come with crazy stories. Mm. Every, it, I have one from Australia, but um, I think I was seven when everyone went on that trip and I was at home. <laughs> <laughs> But I have a shirt from Australia that my that my predecessor wore forever. I found it in the closet when I was cleaning. Yay! Hello. Mm, that's, I that's see quite seven. Forty five pounds. Hmm. Sorry. Oh no, no, I'm I'm just jumping through the. I lost over forty five pounds, but it it took three years. Do you know what's funny? Um, I gained fifty 
and I've probably I gained 60 and I probably lost like 30 of it. <laughs> and that was four years ago. Well, <laughs> no, that's no, nothing to sneeze at. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I love my Harley shirts. They're definitely something that um, I will keep out of all this stuff. Are you, are you checking out, Mona? If you are, have a great night and thank you for stopping by and um, be safe. I know there's storms and hurricanes and everything everywhere, so yeah. please be safe. Stay cozy. Weather is just not kind to any of us, says the Californian. <laughs> I used to hover around 195, 205, but now that I don't have a complete de deficit of a necessary blood component, now I hover around 215. We're around the same weight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 5'9". <laughs> I'm glad you're able to fill out a little bit, Kilroy. But I've been skinny my whole life, so it feels good to not be like a stick. Like, I was skinny my whole life. Hmm. I was well, gaining 20 pounds in two I don't know. Weeks, now I don't like a... Now I look like a prisoner on a bread and water diet. I think that... I think that your your family gave you a a complex because I was the only uh, I was the stick. Yep. You can try to alter the t-shirt by adding at the arms and seams. I did that with a pair of um, I did that with a pair of overalls. I want to say last year with Phoenix on stream, and I put them on. <clears throat> And I've lost weight from that stream. So they were huge because I mm -hmm. added the inner leg and the out leg because I wanted to wear them again. Mm -hmm. But now they're like huge. They're, they look like paint. Like they're huge. They're Jankos now. You can undo the adjustment in the places where it doesn't work to be baggy. <laughs> I don't want to wrench on your mad channel. I was questioning the fact that I'm the only one that has dropped a like. Read the post to the end, you riffraff looking freak. <laughs> well, <sighs> I want to go get my, my stack. Let me set up my chair. I am going to be making um, this shirt. I'm actually stoked. Ooh. Do you remember the? Do you remember the? It's you know the collared shirt that every that every um, dude would wear, but it's like, um, do you remember Cheetah, Cheetah? or the alligator? It, the brand, it had the Cheetah on the shirt, the oh, alligator, like, like the um, like the not polo polos. Yes, <laughs> I because I um from the late eighties, I dressed like I was in Revenge of the Nerds. Okay. I wore uh, my mom dressed me in track suits like I was Polly from the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. Every time I look back at pictures, I'm like, at least my mom like sent me to school matching. I <laughs> looked like I was an Italian gangster. <laughs> my ribcage has always been big. The last time I had a flat st stomach was never. I've always been in the shape of an old school Willie's Jeep. There's someone around here that owns one of those. Those things are beautiful. So I was never skinny as a rail. <laughs> <laughs> I Jordan's always do looking like... out for you. Thank you. And you know what? YouTube is really wonky. For some reason, it'll calculate a lot of my stuff um, at the end of a stream. Mm. It, well, does, it does weird stuff sometimes on YouTube. Absolutely, Ollie Baba, and great to see you, Ollie. Great to see you. Oh no, I took too big a bite. <laughs> I hope I haven't said anything with the riff ref reference. Nobody needs to see Will in stalking and suspenders. <laughs> Give me five minutes. All of that is in this room. <laughs> Uh, it says three awesome, awesome. Like, it's like the kid is absolutely not 100% up to date. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Hello, hello, welcome. Hello, how do you say that? 
Halcyonic Kaiju. Thank you, Halcyonic Kaiju. I needed help from Professor English Major over there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Hello. Hello. Welcome to my so-called life. I don't think I know Halcyonic. Kaiju. Neither do I, but, but all are welcome here in the House of Sewing. I need to plug this in. Thanks for joining in. I'm waving at you. You can't see because I'm <laughs> eating a sandwich and trying not to chipmunk out. But I'll wave again when I come back. Awesome. Awesome. Those Jane oh. Austen sightings finally came in. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I actually have been to a Jane Austen shindig. And I had the dress and everything. And you correct me <laughs> on every Colin Firth reference I've ever made. I always forget what movie, which movie he's in. Oh, yeah, did I that is correct. You? First person to ever get it right on the first go. Look at that victory! Oh wow, that that. Hold on, let's see if it still does it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that deserves fireworks on that. Because <laughs> I think I said, I think I combined some racing styles last time, so I get a little yeah, redemption this idea. time. <laughs> <laughs> joy, thank you, thank you, joyful, joyful joy for just subbing. Great to meet you. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a sweat transsexual from Transylvania? Yes, yes. Uh, I I can't say it. I'm, I'm not an English major. I can barely speak English, and it's my first language. Welcome to the house of sewing. <laughs> It didn't just went to nine after I refreshed. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Awesome, awesome. I hope Trusty Ape is doing well. Sweet laugh aloud was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me grab those shirts before... I completely derail this entire stream. Man, today, you know what? I want to sit on it for a minute because today it has been a Monday. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. And what have you and what were you and young Mr. Selling up to today? I'm trying to encourage him to not like obsess over like this one thing. I want to go to the zoo. I want to go to the beach. And like we only have a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the Los Angeles Kings just lost to the Winnipeg Jets four to three. Back to you, Waterne, as I cry in the corner because we're not making the playoffs this year. Oh no. Well, we I'm will. Sorry. We will. What a disappointment. Glasses help to see the tags. <laughs> Rocky Horror Picture Show is a great. Do you know what's so funny? That reminds me, where's my patches? I have a Tim Curry patch I, I've been meaning to put on a vest, which I actually added a back patch to that um, really faded vest. I didn't, I haven't sewn it on yet, but pinning is half of the battle. I love these cheesy, um, these cheesy back patches. So that's going to fit my. Um, <laughs> My walk of the dead motif. Walking the walking dead motif. Nice. Screw the zoo. You can watch the animals on YouTube. Can't swim just by watching YouTube, though. Go to the go for the beach. <laughs> well, part of the reason is also is I, I haven't gone to the beach since I got pulled over. Because I was so mad at the California Highway Patrol. I haven't gone in over a year and a half. I've gone to other beaches further from my house. <laughs> I well, watched that movie so many times, dog. Oh, same, Kilroy. What did you think of the live musical that they put out a couple of years ago? With um, with um, oh dear, now her name is totally escaping. Dang it! Well, I liked it the first time I saw it, and I loved it the second time I saw. It. <laughs> <laughs> just in case the younger in the chat don't get my reference will gets it because he's he's a fantastically old fart 
I am. I'm I'm the curator of old farts. I am in the old fart museum. <laughs> <laughs> I may be old, but I don't claim fartiness. What's that saying? I always invert the saying. Um, growing up is mandatory. Growing old is optional. Um, that sounds reasonable to me. I think that's it. I have a t-shirt that says that, but I always invert it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually said it right for the first time ever. I mean, but it, it depends. It's a choice. It depends on your perspective. Because, I mean, you could also argue that growing old just chronologically, but then you don't have to grow up. You can have Peter Pan complex or be youthful forever. Yeah. You know, you, you think that, but then today on Rashawn's stream, he had a, um, his stop screen was Michael Jackson. And the whole time it had me thinking of Peter Pan because that was Michael Jackson's obsession. Mm. Was the Disney version of Peter Pan. Have you ever read Peter Pan? The um, awful version or the one that Disney sold? <laughs> the, <laughs> I told you. The, the original version by J.M. Barry. Uh, yeah. No, but I told you about um, about the Disney version that made it even more awful. That one show, Once Upon a Time, I don't want to give it away because it was so awful. But they showed how Peter Pan came to be, and it was not what you think it is. Uh... It was awful. <laughs> awful for 8 o'clock at night television, but it was awful. Uh, yeah, they, they had some they had some hard stories on there. Peter Pan, I'm sorry. Um what's it called? Um Pinocchio was absolutely the worst. I don't remember the Pinocchio story. I'll tell you off stream. That's how bad it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've known people who have never matured beyond teenager years. I've lost years of my life from, from sky high blood pressure dealing with them. I think you got to grow old, but just a bit to not be an annoyance. <laughs> this is very true. So true. <laughs> Ra Ra, hello. Hello, hello, Skit. I'm going to go grab some shirts real quick. Just a couple. Grabbing shirts. Hmm. Are these shirts that we're selling? Are we adjusting them? Are we adding some patches to them? What's going on? I brought two projects with me to work on tonight. I have a toolbox that is a garish shade of yellow. And I'm going to tape it off so that I can paint it. Hopefully the paint will hold up. And then I have my pirate shirt. And I really don't like the ruffle I put around the neckline. So I'm going to take out the seam ripper. Good gracious. What you doing? I'm not kidding. I've been going through all my shirts. Mm -hmm. And last stream, I had a giant pile of black shirts. Dog called me a racist, which made me laugh. And <laughs> this is not a repeat of the first pile. This is a completely different pile of shirts to go through. So are you like sorting them to donate them? Are you going to make yourself a nice quilt for your bed? Whatever um, young Mr. Sewing doesn't want, I'm going to get rid of. Okay. These are the ones that like, well, you know what the funny thing is, is I go through certain ones, I'm like, oh, I'm keeping that one. Oh, I'm keeping that one. But this didn't take last that long last time, but I know I have a shirt problem. Among other things. Who, come on. You need a Sea Shepherd shirt. If anyone ever watched Stargate, Richard Dean Anderson literally funded the Sea Shepherd. They go and stop people from hunting whales. For nice. real. Like, for real, for real. Nice. They used to have a TV show. But I have a ton of I have a... I'm gothic, okay? I'm gothic. <laughs> I'm 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 not complaining. I, you did you did forewarn us. I'm still just shocked at seeing them all at once. 
<laughs> the thing is, other people might say that facetiously, but Skits probably has one that would, would serve quite the purpose for eliminating the eagle head. I just want to say for the record, it's it's an inanimate object. You uh -huh. guys have obviously watched too many scary movies in your life. Don't think we didn't see your creepy mannequin girlfriend sitting on the couch. <laughs> I wonder how many people really thought that was a person sitting on the couch. Let me I know did, if you thought that was in my video. <laughs> I did take a double take. I thought maybe your mom was visiting and just didn't want to be on camera. And then I'm like, no, she's not moving. And those hands are awfully plasticky. <laughs> There's a phone. Let me squeeze in here. <clears throat> not just a shirt problem. Have you ever heard of, of a contraption called a brush or a comb? <laughs> I'm bald, so I don't need it. <laughs> The captain of the Sea Shepherd was taken to court, an international court for pir for piracy and many other things. He would ram whale boats. Oh my! Oh yeah, they and filmed themselves doing it. <laughs> wow! I they're, didn't realize it was quite that hardcore. They're not playing. They're not playing. Come on, I need a countrywearcowboyup.com t-shirt. They gave it to me for free. <laughs> they thought I was joking too. I was like, oh, I'll take that shirt. Random people. I'm I think that's to... crazy about the Sea Shepherd. What's that? Sorry. I'm trying to get my neighbor to say hello. Got to keep it quiet, though, our location, internet safety and whatnot. I just. <laughs> oh, I have to keep this T-shirt, though. Which one is that one? It's Thunder in the Sky from Gettysburg in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> One of the scariest rallies I've ever went to in my life. Oh my! Did that was there an incident? No, but my shirt has a Confederate flag and an American flag on it. Oh goodness! <laughs> what are you doing in a Confederate flag, Mister Brownskin? It's a T-shirt at Joe. It was a um, bikers do these things called runs where they go and they do charitable things. But the t-shirts are always way scarier than what they are. I have a bunch of pins, too. I actually have quite a few pins. They're supposed to put on your vests, but the clasps are always cheap and they fall off. So. Oh. We need some, like, um, what is that stuff? Like, thread lock or something? <laughs> you want it to come off, though, because if you wash it, it's never going to come off. Well, I, th I thought that there was, like, Give it a little twist and the thread lock will release, won't it? Maybe give it a big twist. <laughs> oh, man, I remember when I was this size. I've been to Gettysburg. We have a biker run fundraiser for my nonprofit next week. See, they do runs all the time. My job has my job hosts runs all the time. Because we're by this really famous place where they always film commercials for bikers. It's weird. It's supposed to look like it's out in the middle of nowhere, but it's right in L.A. County. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see it, I'm like, dude, that's like right up the street from my job. It's weird. <clears throat> Do they play Born to be Wild when they're on breaks? Do you know what's so funny? Stefan Wolf will get you laughed at. <laughs> I'll rock Stefan Wolf. Get your mo the second you said that. That is a point of contention of people of the third name. Most people now won't even get the reference because they haven't seen Easy Rider. <laughs> but to people of a certain because I hang out with like I'm the young one. So most people I hang out with are over 50 and 60 now. And like 
that like that's a point of contention. I, you know what? I've always wanted the America helmet, and that's like a no no. <laughs> I want the Jack Nicholas. Who, who? I can't even remember who rocked that helmet, but I want that helmet so bad. <laughs> and plus, they're not structurally safe anymore, anyway. Does anyone make a modern, safe reproduction? You can get a wrap in 10 seconds. Mm. Now I have... Get your motor running. <laughs> oh, no, 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 way stuck in my head. Looking for adventure. <laughs> so is that one of those where they maybe play it ironically? Or is that like playing Stairway to Heaven in a guitar store? <laughs> a both. I'll walk out. You start playing Stairway to Heaven, I'm going to say, really? And I'm going to leave. <laughs> Type it in on YouTube and dare me. Dare, I dare you to find not a thousand people playing it on guitar. <laughs> oh, there it is. This is the shirt I was talking about from Australia. This is the run I did not go on. <laughs> the <laughs> land of the Southern Cross. This is from Adelaide, Australia. Oh, goodness from see, literally such history uh, let's see if it's if i'm huh this shirt is huh 37 years old 38 ish okay you're being you're you're staying oh all my king shirts i have to keep unless you're a hardcore hockey fan how the west was won from 2012 <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could stitch some of them into a wall hanging oh come on kyle clifford he's not even on the team anymore and i doubt i could even fit this shirt if i put it on You're i don't sweet. know who that is he's he was a uh, um someone who played for the kings but mm -hmm. see, that's the problem when you buy shirts that um support like particular players with sports nowadays you don't know if your favorite guy is going to be there a year later that's true. People are not loyal anymore at all in any way, shape, or form. No more bikes for me. <laughs> not stairway allowed. No, no stairway allowed in any music shop. Dog all even changed the radio station. You know it's so sad. Um, I can't believe I'm admitting this, but um, cashmere is like that for me because I've heard it so many times. Uh, yeah. I mean, na, na, na. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard when like there's a song you like so you want to play it but then you it gets overplayed and you never want to hear it again ever um miss jackson by outcast <laughs> I, bought, I bought the album um what's oh hey lever oh, hey lever hey lover by boys to men and um ll cool j is one of the most played out songs in history of all songs. I don't think I know what that song is. Oh gosh, you're fortunate. <laughs> In the mid 90s, that was every other song on the radio and MTV for a good, solid eight months. I can see it now. I'll send it to you. And I'm like, oh, I heard this fun retro song. Do you know this one? And you're like, no. Comfortably numb, never ages for some reason. Oh, there's a ton of songs. You know, what it was is that Chevy bought the rights to a lot of Led Zeppelin songs. And so mm. it kind of killed it for me. And the who. I, if you're, if you're into music, like you should look into the Rolling Stones uh, Flying Circus. There's a whole story behind it. There's all these crazy things. And the who's performance was so amazing. They outperformed the Rolling Stones. And Mick Jagger cut a lot of it, a lot of the footage. <laughs> Oh, because he's a punk. I, mean, <laughs> I don't. I disagree with that. Like but P PBS restored it. Good. And so it's it, you know I watched the performance. I was in my twenties and it gave me goosebumps of something that happened thirty years ago. Before you know, while I was in my twenties, you know. Mm -hmm. But they, you know, they were like the definition of rebels, and now you hear their songs on like. You know, denture commercials. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of weird to me. I was in the grocery store one time and they started playing. What was it? I don't know. It might have been Led Zeppelin or something, but it's like 
this is just too aggro for the grocery store. I'm trying to figure out what I want. The aisles are crowded. I'm trying not to get run over by someone's buggy. And you've got like wailing guitar in the background. Do you know I never even paid attention to it until my son, um, because of his, because he is my son, he's like, you don't hear that music? I never paid attention to, to music in the grocery store. But he's always like, that's the cringiest song ever. And I'm like, hey, this is the jam, man. <laughs> I can't help it. I, like, I'm, I struggle to ignore music. I told you when I was a kid, my church, they took us into the church because I went to catechism classes and somebody would be like reading at a podium and they would have all the facilitators clapping behind and they literally taught us how to ignore people. I thank them for that skill. I thank them for that. They were trying to teach us how to like, you know, because it was a big church. There were babies, people talking, and it really taught me to tune people out. Is that why you start singing when I say something you don't want to hear? <laughs> I've got this feeling. The town is holding me I down. I've considered eating fewer goldfish crackers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to hear Footloose every time I'm trying to be po politely skirt on to the next subject. <laughs> I agree the age, but people listen to Comfortably Numb on the radio in the anticipation of... Uh, that's true. That is true. That's like, um, I loved Ted Nugent until he started talking. <laughs> now I can't stand the Nuge. But he has great music, but he's awful human. <laughs> I am going to um, mute myself while I get the spinach out of my teeth and make a coffee. But I am lurking in the chat, so I got my eye on you all. <laughs> Is that what we're calling it now? <laughs> whatever, whatever we need to say. I don't know. Never it just did like good. I don't really care. <laughs> never did like anything Ted Nugent did. He's just he, he's one of those people that grew up to be an awful human. <clears throat> But you know what? There's all kinds of music I'm into where I don't necessarily agree with the politics of the people. Um, I listen to a lot of Norwegian death metal, and I'm not necessarily into their politics. He's a weak rocker's idea of a strong rocker. I'm definitely going to let that comment sit up there for a minute because he definitely is. But what happened? You know what? It kind of happened to me with Ozzy. I had this image of Ozzy Osbourne as just this unearthly human, just somebody that was, um, I don't know. I'd seen him so many times on stage. I thought Ozzy was just this amazing human. And then the show came out and he started talking. Like this. It, I was like, that's Ozzy Osbourne. That's Ozzy. <laughs> But when you see him on stage, he's rocking out. All the crazy stuff's going on behind him. They have pyrotechnics. And then when the show came out, I'm like, oh, just say no, kids. Just say no. <laughs> you still have spinach in your teeth. Maybe lettuce. <laughs> Ozzy snorted ants. Ozzy's crazy. But you know what, though? He shows the wear and tear. <laughs> Ozzy looks like he partied. Ozzy looks like he had fun getting there, too. <laughs> I actually knew, I actually know quite a few people like that that partied really hard in their youth and they show it in their, uh, as they get older. That's crazy. I met so many people that knew Ozzy or worked for him, and they all saw the slide happening to him. They couldn't stop him. Absolutely. Uh, 
And over the years, you can see it like in interviews and stuff where he just literally started going downhill. Dental flaws. <laughs> and it, it wasn't necessarily rapid because I started um, seeing Ozzy in the, in the early 90s and you could already tell. Okay, I think that was the back. Okay, this is the arm. These arms are two different pieces. It's not complicated. I just have to pay attention <laughs> to make sure that I put them together properly. <clears throat> Steven Tyler of Aerosmith can't really remember the 70s. He just gets upset about that. You know what? Honestly, I would be upset. I, I have an identic memory. I remember everything. That would be upsetting if I forgot everything. I can't I can't believe Ozzy is still alive. I bet Sharon is fed up of waiting for him to die. I understand how Melina... I can't say her name. Melania feels. <laughs> oh, that's funny. By the 90s, he had 20 plus years of hard living. You could tell. You can. Oh, I dropped my pink cushion. And you know, I saw um, Dio quite a few times, and um, Dio showed no wear or tear. He did slowly start looking like my grandmother, but we all will eventually. So that's that's just nature. All right. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to iron this, but I'm going to iron it when I get the pieces together. Or I can be a rebel and put it in my um put it in my dryer <laughs> on iron setting. Whoa. And they put on, I saw Motorhead towards the end of their career, and they put on such a good performance. And they they played, um, they played, it, that's back when um, they had the Triple H theme song. That was the first song they played, and the crowd went crazy. Uh, all right, let me line this up. Perfect. <laughs> I miss that whole era. Do you know what the funny thing is? I don't think I would go to a house show like that, like I used to. I used to go to all kinds of house shows, and I don't know if I if I would go like I used to. Okay. All right, let me get my initial pin in. Would and I know I ask this question all the time, but would you would anybody here go to a festival? In a lot of ways, I miss it. In a lot of ways, I would not go. <laughs> and I've I've been to stagecoach and Coachella before you had to get tickets. Okay, perfect. Let me drink two liters of JD daily right up to his death. His body should have shut down in the 70s. I actually grew up with scotch and vodka drinkers, and they lived to be both lived to be in their 80s. Well, the two people I'm thinking of. <laughs> Which were literally like the real life Donnie don'ts. Okay. I might have to do a little surgery on this shirt. I'm going to pin it and see. 
I made this white on purpose, but I might cut some of it off just to even it out for the serger. Great opportunity to, to see a lot of great bands, but too crowded and can't see when you're too short and way far back. Could have been there hundreds. I I totally agree, though. For me, I just don't have the chops to be standing around all day like that. I miss the excitement. I miss the crowds. Like at Slayer shows, when the pit would start, it was the craziest thing to see. Like 300 people going in a circle at once. All right. You know what? I'll go if I could um, get a bunch of prednisone and amoxicillin. I'll go to a show. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. We're going to see. <laughs> All right. I line that up. You know what? I'm going to run this through the serger before, before I do anything else. Because I'm really interested to see how this comes out. The only concert I've been to is a classical one. Screw standing in a field to hear music. That's way too loud. Played a thousand freight from you around shitloads of people you'll never see again. <laughs> Can you even paddle a, a wheelchair? <laughs> You'd be I've seen people crowd surf in a wheelchair. You'd be surprised. <sighs> Perfect. Perfect. I'm actually really interested to see how this comes out. Let me move my boots. It's almost time to retire those. <laughs> but they're just ratty enough where I need to take a picture of them and send them off to the company and be like, this is what real cowboy and uh... <laughs> All right. Perfect. Yay, perfect timing. I will mute myself. Hello, hello. You could do a video where you shine up your boots. So they have like patina, but they look all clean and fancy again. Well, I do that anyways, because I like it when people are like, I love your shoes. Not knowing like they're completely ripped at the top and they're just old and ratty. Yeah. <laughs> But you could make a video out of it. Gives you some uh, some ver variety in your in your content. I'm not a very sturdy human anymore. I need to tear <laughs> a roof and an intermission. <laughs> Yay! Um, Welcome back, Joy. Thank you, thank you. I have a coffee. I'm set. <laughs> Now I have that song stuck in my head. Which song? The Knockin' Boots song. The Knockin' Boots song? What are you listening to? I don't know this <laughs> Knockin' Boots song. I have tickets to see Hans Zimmer in the summer. It's sort of class two, 200 piece orchestra. That would be good. I wonder, would they let me take a video camera in the Disney concert hall? Mm. You Keep in mind, you have to wear a suit. <laughs> Probably not, but maybe for like a rehearsal, if you got permission from the artist. I know people like Alibaba does. Well, Alibaba knows everybody, but I know people. <laughs> I, 
And I have a friend who's a real life opera singer. Right. Ooh, nice. My friend one time said that she had tickets for Midori at the Disney concert hall and did I want to go? I said, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> wow. That would be cool. My mom and I got to see um, Esapekka Solonen in his debut his debut guest spot with the what was it the LA Philharmonic or something like that we were we went that night and it was it just so happened to be the first time he conducted them it was great you've seen Hans twice already trust me when I say it's an emotional experience that would be his music's very evocative I keep on getting an ad for, I don't want to say what country it's for, but it's like some dance company that's, um, I don't want to know, I don't know if they're from Japan, I don't know where they're from, but I really want to see it, and I can't pronounce what it is, but I constantly am being sold this commercial because I may or may not want, constantly watch the HMS Pinafore <laughs> and the um, Kevin Klein version of Pirates of Penzance. Oh, I like that version. I it's on YouTube for free. Um, I love that movie. Angel Lansbury's in it. I've watched that movie like a good 20 times. I love that movie. So did you ever watch the pirate movie? I think I told you about it or sent you a link or something. You know what? I think I watched it because of you. Okay. I think I went... I've seen it. I have seen it. Uh -huh. And what did you think? I loved it, but I'm a cheese bag. <laughs> I'm a total cheese bag. You know, like I loved um, Airplane. I can't believe I'm admitting this. I own every Naked Gun movie. Oh, goodness. And I'm going to say, and you can make fun of me for this. I don't care because I grew up with this man and I love him. I own every Ernest movie ever made. Oh, wow. If Ernest went there, I went there with him. <laughs> <laughs> and Ernest went everywhere. <laughs> Even a so-called live orchestra beats the <laughs> on recording. A so-so mm. live orchestra. My mom and I used to go see the Nutcracker every year. And it was getting to be more and more of a struggle finding one that had a live orchestra. And it makes such a big difference to like not have recorded music for the ballet. Alibaba says they're China. They're from China. Are you talking about the, what is it? Shen Tzu or? I want to say Shen Tzu. I want to see them so bad. I want to see them. <laughs> but I think it's because advertising works. Mm. <laughs> That is a huge um, ad that they're constantly advertising towards me. I had a friend. King Yoon, I think. Ah, oh, Yoon. Yeah, I think so. I had a friend who saw it and she said it wasn't what she expected. Um, very political, like, and like, oh, um, um, like emotionally fraught sometimes. Well, in the commercial, the guy says he was crying. But a lot of the time, those people are paid to say that, you know? Mm. Oh, I miss the Ernest. Ernest go goes to disappear up his own ass. Have you seen that one? Yes, I have. It was a great movie. They are China's best that is alive at the moment. I want to say it's so bad. I, I'm telling you, though, it's because advertisement works. Advertising works. I've seen some, um, like, short documentary clips and things on YouTube of their, like, training regimen and stuff. And whew, they are tremendous athletes. I think that's what it is, too. It's the unbelievable discipline it takes to do half of the moves. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever been to Cirque du Soleil? I have. 
Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't, I don't get, I'm not um, entertained anymore. And Circus LA had me like, <gasps> it was definitely um, worth it. They're, they're, so the acrobatics in that are, are pretty incredible. I did, I did acro sport in high school, but yeah, I was, I was not anywhere near <laughs> that level. Just, you know, want to, want to stay up front, <laughs> but I have um, a friend of mine was very advanced. He was like world champion. He and his partner, like doubles partner. And he won the world championship like four times or something ridiculous. But he was, he was always amazing. I remember, I think it was like one of the first times I met him because he was my friend's little brother. Um, he did like a no warm up, just out in the backyard. Yeah. Did a round off back handspring, back layout, just you know, on the grass casually. Here we go. We that's why I'm telling you, um, that Kevin Bacon flip and footloose is uh, deserves a review. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to do that, and I would be scared. I have insurance, and I'm scared to do stuff like that now. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time since I did any flippy stuff. I tried to take a um, a tumbling class in college, but it was canceled, and then I was in a car accident. And yikes! I have a question for Kilroy. You're not into like like Circus Soleil is like a it's like it's like an acid trip without having to take a tab. <laughs> It seems like it would be something you would enjoy, Kilroy. I'm surprised that it's not your, not of interest to you. It's uh, it was a trip. I was trying to give my son some culture, and I <laughs> sat there with my mouth open like this is circus Sole. <laughs> and what did young Mister Sewing think of it? Oh, he was a kid, so he was mesmerized. <laughs> Aww, we used to go do stuff. Now he just wants to. Do MMA stuff. <laughs> uh, well, you know, he'll come back to it. I told him oh. this week, this week we're going either to the zoo, we're going to go either see the otters, or we're going to the ocean. I don't want to um, cut you off, but Dog is saying good night. Have a great night, Dog. Thank you so much for hanging out. Dog says, I love you guys, but I actually need to sleep. The compellingness of you guys is affecting my health. I will fall to sleep with Will and Polished in the background. Good night, all. <laughs> Have a great night. Oh, these arms are weird. But he's he's going to lurk, apparently. So There's nothing wrong right. with that. And if you are um, hanging out right now, you are appreciated. Thank you. Don't forget Hello. to like and subscribe and all those cliche things that YouTubers say. Oh. The House of Sewing absolutely appreciates you. If you're lurking, feel free to say hello. We're friendly here. And to all those people who say, hey, William, you've changed. I hope I have. <laughs> I hope I have. <laughs> you grew up or old or whichever we're going with, way we're see, going with that expression. See, all of the above. <laughs> I've only I've only been upside down once in my adult life. I can still remember the headache from the blood going in my head. <laughs> Do you know what's so funny? Do you remember the the first Michael Keaton Batman where he had that thing where he was suspended upside down? People um I don't remember, but being suspended upside down is kind of nice. It decompresses your back. <laughs> There's a lot of people that actually do that, and you, um, Wonder Twin, just said what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> do you have one of those? No, I don't have the chops for that anymore. Everything gives me a headache. Mm. Everything. <laughs> I don't have the chops anymore. I was like an adventurer. I was the bungee jump type, and then I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> slash old 
you know what it is? It's the realization of mortality. Ah, uh, yes. Because you can do it. Like, ignorance is bliss for real because you're not thinking about it. You don't think like, hey, I'm going to get hurt. Like, if I felt, I would not be able to ever walk again. You're just like, hey, I'm going to have the time of my life. Now, at my age now, if I stood at that same ledge, I'd be like, here, take the money. take your, t Go treat your significant <laughs> other. I'm out of here. <laughs> I do have a, a healthy sense of self-preservation. I remember. I oh, go ahead. Oh, just I remember I was in class and I could do, you know, back walkovers for days on a little line on the floor. But you put me up on the beam and I'm supposed to lean over backwards and just, you know, trust that my hands are going to go in the right spot. and I'm not going to fall four feet to the ground and break my neck. You know, that was hard to wrap my head around. <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> Have you ever um, done like zip lining for more than um, half a mile? I've never been zip lining at all. <laughs> if you get, well, if you find an accredited place, <laughs> <laughs> I always laugh when people are like, I went to some jungle in Panama and it was sketchy because you were in a sketchy you were in a sketchy <laughs> place you know it had nothing to do with panama it's that you picked a sketchy place you know what is that place i saw a video about it and <clears throat> there's some like the villages are all like dotted around this gorge and so to get from to save like really long walks all the way around the people would like, you know, go get their groceries and then zip line back to the other side to go home. Ah, hello, hello. That's my neighbor, John. Everyone hey. say hi. I was like, I was like, whoa, people in my neighborhood would just bang on my garage door. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, John. Hello, hello. You are welcome here in the house of sewing. I'm that person that I don't like amuse. I'm that person that don't like amusement parks. But if I'm forced to go to one, I'm gonna ride the Ferris wheel and go <laughs> and the pirate <laughs> ship. Oh my gosh, um, Magic Mountain still has the same pirate ship from the 1970s. Oh, that big like swingy one. I, and they still have the spinny room. Oh, no, no, no. I that made the, the mistake the of going on that once. I had regrets. <laughs> As an adult, I don't. I couldn't do it. I jumped off a shoot tower once. The line goes off. And then I had to do the roll at the end. Yikes. Or break my legs. They oh, my goodness. That roll is real. They taught us that at Boy Scouts. They had us jump out of this tower. And they were like, roll or break your legs. Back when the Boy Scouts made men. <laughs> <laughs> a slash insurance claims <laughs> it was a different time <clears throat> no bang she just gives me big goods at 2 a.m that's how it <laughs> should be the world the world would be a better place are you kidding me that's how it should be now i'm craving baked goods and it's not even two. when you have baked goods going spare <laughs> And your neighbor's mother has a, a little bit of a sweet tooth. You're like, hey, this works out well. The more you eat, the fewer I eat. Who Like, I am the real life foghorn leghorn. If you're cooking a pie, I will float over towards <laughs> it. People don't cool pies on window seals anymore because it's not the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> but if they did, I'd be out there. <laughs> but, you know, the smell of barbecue. Oof. I uh, made carne asada yesterday. Oh, yeah. How did that go? It brought back the... Um, I once did a parachute jump for a charity. It was a wonder. It was a wonder. I landed safely with the size <laughs> of the turd launch in my hand. <laughs> for real. That's for it. real. Nah, man. That's real. To civilians, anyone who's ever served is laughing at us. But to civilians, that's some scary stuff. <laughs> yes, yeah, mom said sent over all of it. <laughs> Telling you, making the world a better place one cookie at a time. 
<laughs> Care Bear for the win. <laughs> So, Kilroy said something earlier about Cirque du Soleil. What was it? Oh, I'm impressed by engineering and technical subjects, not people in costumes flying around. And Cirque du Soleil doesn't have the appeal of a play or musical to me. Huh. All right. I'm easily impressed. I love The Matrix 4. I'm not going to sit up here and pretend like... <laughs> I love the circus so late. But you know, I when I used to go to Vegas all the time, I would go to shows by myself. I've seen the rat pack. I, I've seen Paul Anka. I'm um uh, Wayne Newton is still performing to this very day. Goodness. I've seen Wayne Newton twice. And how many people <laughs> can say that? And the first time I won the tickets for free. The second, um, it's just it's it's weird. It's just a cool place. Like those shows are really personal. It's not like Adele where you're going in an arena, you know, like you're sitting close. People are smoking and drinking. It's old school Vegas. Cirque du Soleil will have like a theme, but they don't really have a storyline. So, you know, I can understand how that maybe doesn't grab you. So do you feel the same way about the Nutcracker? Not enough storyline for you? Do you enjoy the ballet? I have a friend who really likes opera. And I don't know, a little opera only goes a long way for me. You know, it's so funny. Um, I don't even speak the language and I love, depending on what they're singing, I love opera. It's, I, like um, it. I like it even more when I don't speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the the skill and talent and to be able to do opera but it's not something that i like to listen to very much i mean it depends you know the occasional aria or you know fun chorus or whatever but just generally speaking <clears throat> i was in the hospital oh. waiting room today and caught a look at the prices right sorry to sorry to say it but drew carey now looks like robin williams <laughs> okay but Drew Carey, I like opera ballet as a little iffy for me. I'm going to go off about Drew Carey because Drew Carey is actually an L.A. legend. And not in the way you think. I'm not about to say something positive. I'm not. <laughs> Drew Carey is a rock star. Drew Carey drives a Ferrari around. He hangs out with like 20-year-old blonde women. Like Drew Carey is a rock star. So if he looks terrible, he earned it. He hmm. uses his fame. He moved to L.A. and he is known in the Hollywood, Los Angeles area. Like Drew Carey is a player, player, a real oh, one. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. And he knows like and he's so rich. He has no natural predators when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> natural predators. <laughs> none. None whatsoever. I've seen Wayne Newton. I never understood his obsession with Donkey Jane. I'm kind of afraid to ask. Donkey should never be chained. Uh, do I want to know what a donkey chain is? I would explain it I'm going to go from go that with that's a no from the silence. <laughs> I'm trying to pin these arms. Do, you, do I need to sing Footloose again? I've got this feeling this town is holding me down. <laughs> you know, so what so are you sewing today? Hmm? I am actually sewing something different. I'm sewing McCall's pattern L9532. It's a shirt. And I know it's a shocker because we're not going to see the normal guy that we always see. It's this guy. Wow. But, um... You know, it's been a while. And I've actually used to make this pattern all the time. But then I fell in I'm pointing to the wrong computer. But then I fell in love with the, um, I wear long sleeve every day. You're going to see during the summer, you're going to be like, William, I know it's 90 degrees where you live. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm weird. I love wearing long sleeves. So I fell in love with the long sleeve pattern. 
You should so. get yourself some nice linen so that you can wear long sleeves without overheating. Wonder twin. <laughs> I you was actually linen? thinking about I was actually thinking about doing the exactly what you said. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of um like I'm into all different types of styles, but I've been really hunting for people who talk about like um egyptian stuff basically anyone who lives in the desert i want to know how you dress because i live in the desert mm. you know and it's all about layering <laughs> yeah i will i will <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean i'm not that young but i guess i don't know hey take Maybe it I hey in the right circles <laughs> hey take it when I get carded, when someone cards me, I'm like, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I always tell them, I'm probably 20 years older than you are, but thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, it gets to the point where I do kind of feel like it's a little ridiculous. But, you know, then sometimes I see a picture of myself and I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess it's ambiguous. But, well, no, now I've got the gray hair, so... Do we need to get pictures of people that are your age and show the vast difference? <laughs> Don't make me shame other people. <laughs> I mean, you saw my I face. Just... You saw my face when I found out how old Snoop Dogg was. Uh -huh. He's really lived a hard life. <laughs> I know he's skinny, but I'm relatively skinny too. And I, I can't believe his age. I couldn't believe when I found out his age. Uh, but, you know, he also has a very like, um, like angular face. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think that his features are always going to make him look, make him look older. True. I would, I, uh, I I hang out with people his age. <laughs> For some reason, I thought he was so much older. But, you know, smoking ages you. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what Kilroy said. He's, I quit getting carded when I quit drinking. And then at the smoke shop, I never get carded. <laughs> They don't go. It's different at the smoke shop. This guy, um, he opened up the smoke shop by my house when I was a kid. I moved away for a decade and stuff, but now his kids work there. And when I walk in, they're like, Oh, you've been coming here since before I was born. And I'm like, Just give me a lighter and some papers, kid. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> The guy even this weekend said it. He's like, do you know my dad said you're one of the oldest customers? And I'm like, that's and in my head. I'm like, that's not a good thing. Oh, my gosh. Let me get out of here. You're shaming me, kid. And it was like 11 in the morning on a Saturday. Like, I'm a, if you call me old, I might cry in your face. I might just start crying right there. The kids don't understand. <laughs> They're like, what, what, why would you have, you are old. Why would you have a problem with that? <laughs> Joy, Joy said the this is the comment of the evening so far. I before the stream started, I told Waternay like it's Monday and I'm already ready for spring break to be over. See, I've been child free, and that <sighs> that's helped me keep my youth. <laughs> I'm over it. I am over. I'm already over spring break. And then I look at my kid, I'm like, do you want to take a break from MMA class? He's like, no. But I refuse to buy him that ten thousand dollar car, so I gotta drive him. You're old, you're old fossil. Now start crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shed tears over my mortality. Do you know the ones that get me? I, and I'm not on Twitter as much as I used to be. And shout out to all those people who are still subscribing to my Twitter. Um, the one that got me. Is when it when it was a meme that said the PlayStation 2 is now 20 years old. I was like, <gasps> it can't be that old. And now it's like 22 years old or 23 or something crazy. They're coming out with a set of um Farscape graphic novels for the 20th anniversary. And I'm like, 20th anniversary. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh. Is that how old my books are? All that, like, um, I was obsessed with the Sunday funnies. Dilbert, uh, even the boondocks when they started, all of it. Um, I was obsessed from a kid on. I didn't even get half of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved Sunday funnies. I used to be terrified of mortality after all this hospital stuff. Now I'm extremely neutral on it. It's fine mm -hmm. by me now. I, I, I'm in a weird acceptance of my life. <laughs> Bizarro. I want to live a really long time, but you know, if the whole world's underwater or something, then might not have such an appeal. Zombie apocalypse, you know, that's a different apocalypse. We can move. I, I'll help you. I got a truck. That's the one time I'll volunteer. If the water's <laughs> coming, I'll help you move. <laughs> but you know what? Between the two of us, we have too many sewing machines. <laughs> hey, I got a 35, I got a couple 35 foot buses. I'll give you a real crash course on how to drive it. I'll have you driving okay. that thing in five minutes. Okay. All right. It's just, uh, you know. When you're driving a 35 foot long vehicle, you just got a lot of junk in the trunk. So you got to make wide turns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> I still love Garfield. Uh, you know, I feel like a geek because um, I still have a ton of Garfield books. When I'm really feeling like if it's a really rainy day, I'll bust out a Garfield book. I like Calvin and Hobbes loved Calvin and Hobbes too. Oh, Isaiah had a tiger he carried around everywhere to the point where one of his teachers said that if he still had it in the sixth grade, they were going to give the tiger a diploma. <laughs> I, like I love Far Farside Side. comics too, probably, <laughs> right? Get a lot of my Far Side. I have a bunch of their books. They're hilarious. I do hate Mondays. <laughs> Today has definitely been a Monday. <laughs> well, I was thinking more of an emergency situation, Kilroy. Kilroy is suggesting allied van lines. <laughs> I can drive one of those too. I have the license. I have the um, license for it. <clears throat> Doc was giving us a German lesson. I realized that I don't want to say it because I have no no German background, but you know, DS, thank you in German. Um, yes, but I was not making the association that it was donkey chains. <laughs> I love Garfield. Um, Alibaba. Love Garfield. Where name it's going. <laughs> we do like that's I think about that all the time because I I want to move, but I I would have to move in phases, because mm. it would take me a while like to empty my storage unit. That would be a whole weekend with Allied van lines. <laughs> well, I mean that might be motivation to empty your storage unit. But then where are all my Garfield books and all my DVDs that are well forgotten? I have seriously over like a thousand DVDs in storage. I have like 15 copies of Boris Korloff, Devil Commands. I have okay. every Errol Flynn movie ever put out. I have you every don't... John Wayne, every uh, Richard Pryor movie. Any If Richard Pryor was in it, it's in my um, DVD. Yes, story. but you don't need six copies of each. <laughs> Keep the best one, sell the rest. Yeah, but I need six copies of Brewster's Millions. <laughs> Why? I just have you seen that movie? That is uh, Brewster's movie. Millions is one of the greatest movies of all time because Richard Pryor starts off just wearing a Cubs jersey and a pair of jeans, and he ends wearing a Cubs jersey and a pair of jeans. But I love that movie. You only watch one copy at a time. I mean, do these have like different special features on them or something? Challenge me. I'm sitting in a room with like three DVD players, a VCR. Do you know what's so geeky? I have to show this to you because I pulled it out. <laughs> there, hold on. Do you see that mini black TV? Let's see what's in it. Let's see what's in it. Let's see. 
this is motivation for myself just as much as you. I'm on I'm on a clean out thing. I've been cleaning out the garage. I sorted my fabric stash. I went through part of my wardrobe. You know, it's a process. I am cleaning though. This is the great cleaning. Like there's actual progress going on in this house, just not in this room. <laughs> Uh, the one Catholic school I went to was part of a 150-year-old German Catholic parish. My German pronunciation isn't perfect, but it is it's better than most Americans. That makes sense, given where you're, given where you're from. Look at the quality. That's like a 13-inch television or something tiny. But it's a VCR combo. Oh, how cute. And, and knowing me, I guarantee you it's Captain Kirk. It's weird watching the original Star Trek without the um, volume because all you see is <laughs> they are the kings and queens of overacting. That era is just, <laughs> you can't even compete with that era. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you, Kilroy. I do need six copies unless I, in case I lose the other. And how many people um, have seen Foreign Correspondent? Alfred Hitchcock, I am a curator <laughs> enabler. <laughs> we are definitely getting less in this evening. Possibly yes. assemble. Danka is thank you in German. Danka Shane is thank you very much. Wayne absolutely gets a cheeky reach around that made him write this song. That's the name of my next punk band is Cheeky Reach Around. <laughs> and that's also my my um, alternate universe name, too, is Cheeky Reach Around. I like that. That's my wrestling name. Cheeky Reach Around. He'd be big in the Commonwealth. <laughs> you, think, you know what's really funny? And I, I, because I have a million sports channels, I started watching the professional British basketball league. Oh, it's on um, what's now. It used to be prime networks. It's on whatever channel the ho hockey's on. It's on um, now it's called Bally sports, I believe. And how do they do? You know what? Um, I like it, but again, I'm easily entertained. You can make fun of me. I watch the WNBA make fun of me. I don't care. <clears throat> but again it's because i've met a bunch of people from the sparks because of my job so it's interesting to me because i've seen these people in real life mm. <laughs> but i like all the sports like i'm subscribed right now there is a woman's professional volleyball league and you guys need to support it even though they have like a thousand something people in the chat every time they um, go live. Oh, goodness. And most new sports die out real quick. But they're actually, I was really surprised. They're picking up steam because there's a, um, they're starting a professional women's hockey league. And it's hard pressed to find that anywhere. Hmm. But it'll <clears> be <throat> in a theater near you. And I saw a bend it like Beckham. So I know all about the women's soccer league. We had this talk. I, I don't know. I have never seen that movie. <gasps> oh, it's delightful. Is it? Is it a good movie? It's so good. I have never seen that movie. And when I think of Beckham, uh, Beckham and was it Posh? Who was he married to? Yeah. They were very much like Ben Affleck and J Lo. They live in a different LA than all of us. Because <laughs> he was paid a literal truck full of money to play soccer in LA. Wow. <laughs> they built a stadium for the guy. Well, you know, when you've got skill and talent. You know what, though? He didn't bring notoriety. Like, Wayne Gretzky came to L.A. and he introduced hockey. Um, there's a whole generation of people that play hockey because Wayne Gretzky came to L.A., you know? Mm -hmm. Will people say that about Beckham? I don't know. 
it's interesting what that because soccer is hugely popular with like youth sports and yet we don't seem to go crazy over it for like pro leagues in the same way that it that is popular in other countries Alibaba says Canadian Women's Hockey League is going strong in Canada. Okay. That sport is wonderful that way. Sidney Crosby mm -hmm. plays for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh. He is the new GOAT. He is one of the new greatest of all times. He's put up unreal numbers. And he won a cup in my lifetime. So he's an amazing hockey player. Nice. Because in hockey, like the Montreal Canadiens will be like, oh, I won all these cups in 1920, 1921, 1925. <laughs> like, you know, no one was around. Matter of fact, Alexa, when's the last time the Montreal Canadiens won the Stanley Cup? The Montreal Canadiens have won the Stanley Cup 24 times, the last one coming in 1993. Against the Los Angeles Kings. <laughs> Sorry. Soccer doesn't have the massive marketing that football and the rest have true. It should. But they filled the stadiums, though. And um, the Chargers, when they first came to L.A., they played at that stadium. It's not small. By football standards, it is. But, you know. If you get 10,000 people to come see me, I consider that a victory. <laughs> but who, you know. No, it's, it's interesting. You like you watch some YouTuber and you're like, this person only has 1.5 million subscribers. That other person has 2 million subscribers. And, you know, here I am. I'm like, oh, I have 30 subscribers. It's great. I remember um, when I got the first subscriber and I didn't know who it was. That was a milestone for me. So thank you, everybody who subscribed. I still get offended <laughs> when people say that. I'm like, oh, only half a million? Go stuff yourself. Whatever <laughs> ever says that. I'm like, you are not appreciative. Which reminds me, I appreciate everyone who has subscribed <laughs> to my so-called life channel. <laughs> Laugh out loud, the maple leaves. But the, see, but like the leaves are doing okay this year. And you know why? It's because of the East Coast bias. Um, I'm constantly watching their games because they're on television all the time. <clears throat> I think soccer is a lot safer. I'm not for kids playing sports, but if they want to do it, get them into soccer. They don't bounce their brains around. You know what's funny? Baseball's like that too. Baseball, you can sit in left field and eat a hot dog, <laughs> and that ball will never get hit to you. <clears throat> America, although this soccer team sucks a lot. <laughs> you know, it's different in America when we talk about soccer, because if we were in any European country, there would be 100,000 people in those stadiums, you know, but not here. <laughs> the, leaf, the leaves are going to fold as they are. <laughs> Now you sound like me when people are like, oh, the Kings are going to make the playoffs. I'm like, yeah, well, that's about all they're going to do. And I'm like a huge Kings fan, but I'm like so cynical. Okay, so I'm going to move some of this and attach the arms. Because Dog was giving us Latin earlier, but my Latin is rusty and I couldn't translate it. I was recommending, though, that everybody should learn Latin. I, you know, it's so funny. I tried to reteach myself with this. I love Mary Beard. She's a presenter in the UK. She uh, mainly does Roman stuff. I love Mary Beard. She tried to teach me Latin and she went to a school in the UK and was a lat like she was a Latin teacher. Man, I would not be able to pass like the tenth grade in the UK as far as their Latin class because <laughs> I I failed that class. 
I got the books um, Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata. Oh, wow. Those are pretty neat because they're, it's, they teach you kind of the same way you acquire language. So um, they don't translate it. They just talk to you. Well, I mean, it, it's a written down, but, you know, and you kind of, you learn it at like by kind of by figuring it out. What was that thing that you showed me that I want to watch the real version of it? Was that French? Oh, oh yeah. French in action. Oh, I want to watch that so bad. Something like that will teach me French. Like I need something like that where they just like slowly fall into it. Mm -hmm. Even today, uh, um, <laughs> on Rashawn, I'll show you. I want to after the stream remind me. But today on Rashawn's stream, I let my Spanish slip out because they were we, we were talking about songs, but then they played Selena. Ah, oh. and my Spanish came flying out. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? I'll show it to you because I can't remember now, but I think people were shocked when they found out that like old man sewing speaks more than one language legitimately when I let it fly. I'll show it to you. It's actually really funny. No, but I want to hear your Spanish. Let it fly. I need to practice. Well, see now that like I was cheesy. I was like, um, I'm going to vote for mi vida, mi muñeca, mi mujer. Um, I said, I can't even see now that I'm trying. It was so cheesy because Spanish is a love language. You could literally pour it on pancakes. It is so, <laughs> it's so thick. It is so thick. You could do this with Spanish and just pour it all over your pancake. So Alibaba agrees that Mary Beard is great. And oh dear, dogs got fighting words about football versus rugby. It says American football is a massive padded sor uh, I think sorority girls pillow fighting compared to rugby. It's the padding. <laughs> and Alibaba says, I played rugby dog in the days when you punch the other guy in the scrum <laughs> and said soften up the other team before play. <laughs> And then the only time I broke bones was rugby. And then Joy, going back to more positive things, um, also loves Mary Beard. I love Mary Beard. I, I um, for a long time, I used to fall asleep to her um, Roman documentaries, but I watched them so many times. I can quote them. Like when I call Caligula um, Boudicans, I got that from Mary Beard. And I can tell you why they called him Boudicans because Mary Beard told me why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I like Scorpio Martins. And also, I like, um, I like, um, eh. why does this happen to me? I'll get back to you. Selena. She liked uh, Selena. Selena was amazing. Mm. And they played that song uh, I Could Fall in Love With You It was like they were playing songs um, From people who Like the song at, that came out after they passed away Yeah Oh I remember when she died That was everyone was like wait what, what? Yeah cause she, and she was She was off by a fan too So it hurt even Her more manager. That's right <laughs> Sorry. No no you're right You're right I can see that crazy lady's face, too, because she was plastered all over the news. Mm. Oh, I don't know if that head hole is going to be big enough. We're going to find out. Mm. That is such a good song, though. I could fall. That, that, if that doesn't grab you, seek help. <laughs> <clears throat> The present curator curator at Pompeii does YouTube new finds and and some live stuff. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's, that sounds interesting. They keep on finding new stuff. That's awesome. That's like in Egypt. They just keep on going out in the desert and finding stuff. Mm. Oh, yeah. Scorpio Mar Martianus is the one I was thinking of. Not to change the subject, but. 
Okay, let's see where <laughs> these weird arms go. <laughs> There's a video where Scorpio is testing to see how much Latin the Italians can understand. And he's walking around talking to people in Latin instead of Italian. And they're at first they're like, what? And then he'll repeat himself and they'll answer back. And he concluded that they really do understand. They just get annoyed. <laughs> to be fair, though, <laughs> if somebody walked up to you and started speaking almost English, you would be like, what? Wait a minute. What'd you say? Slow down. <laughs> There was another video where he went to the Vatican and was approaching all the different priests and speaking to them in Latin to see Could how they, of them spoke Latin. Did they pass the test? I'm interested in that one. Um, most of them. There were a couple who were apparently pretty rusty on their Latin, but a couple of them were able to like have an actual, you know, conversation. But also, you know, people people excel in different ways some for some people they can you know read a foreign language no trouble but if they have to come up with something and speak it on their own then it's a struggle um but like the vatican is like the major leagues as far as the Catholic <laughs> Church go. how can you get to the big leagues without speaking latin they didn't start, they didn't start speaking um english in churches until my lifetime mm-hmm Everything was in Latin, and somebody was like, "Hey, man, we haven't ever understood you ever. <laughs> we just come here, and stare, at, stare at the walls. We don't have no idea what you're saying." <laughs> this is true. I don't speak German, but I can count to ten. <laughs> Dog says you can learn to count in any language in about one hour. Learn one to ten. The teens, then it all fits into place after that. Well, except for French, and they're like four score and seven years ago. Oh gosh. <laughs> I still have to Google what a score is. I'm not a man of to admit it. <laughs> Twenty years. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to be I'm trying to make a funny. Now I have Selena just rent free in my head. Can put some flared pants on and dance to Bitty Bitty Bum Bum. Bitty Bitty, better song to get stuck in my head. Thank you. Bitty Bitty Bum Bum. <laughs> okay. They play Selena everywhere here, man. You see, man, Selena's at the grocery store. Selena, she is the Tejano Elvis. Mm. Kilroy says, I've read comments in Scorpio's videos from Spanish speakers who say they can catch a lot more in Latin than Italian with their Spanish knowledge. Uh, you know what's so funny? I, in a very arrogant way, thought I could understand Italian, and I cannot. I can. Some of the words are vaguely similar, but Kilroy's 100% right. I, I mean... If someone speaks kind of basic Italian, I can do okay. I mean, I had like Spanish and French. And so like a couple times, like I, I was at, um, I went to the theater and when I was on vacation in London and my mom and I saw Phantom of the Opera and we were up in the balcony and there was this lady beside me <clears throat> and she only spoke Italian and I didn't speak any Italian. So I spoke Spanish and she spoke Italian and we managed to kind of, chit chat while we waited for the waited for the play to start i love stuff like that he also went on the vatican shortwave radio and spoke latin there that's awesome oh excuse me i forgot you also need to learn words for a hundred and a thousand it's just basic logic the only language that differs from the logic is hungarian because they have a different name <clears throat> for 20 plus, but who cares? All of them Baltic languages are dying at death. Oh my gosh. Dog. For anyone who's wondering, dog does not feel that way. <laughs> dog just likes to stir the pot. You're kind by calling it a pot. <laughs> 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 
trying to keep things fresh around here. Hey, we, <laughs> no, we, no, this is San Diego. We keep it classy here. We keep it classy, San Diego. At least we try to. Oh, man. We'll... Will Farrell is a giant Los Angeles Kings fan, and Ron Burgundy shows up to the games. He goes in character? In character. He did a whole um he he's done, he sits in the booth with the announcers. Oh goodness. Oh yeah. And the funny thing is, like, I'm watching this and I'm like, dude, he's doing this for free. Like, they should pay this man. But he's a huge hockey fan. And so he's a huge LA Kings fan. He's probably just having a good time. There's nothing wrong with that. And he probably gets a gang of free tickets. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever he's in the building, he gets swarmed by people. And think about it. You can go to a Los Angeles Kings hockey game and see famous people. How LA is that, you know? Oh, very true. Very true. That's like, that's one of their selling points. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of, see, that's the tricky thing about LA because it's, it's, you know, you're around and you might see a famous person. Um, you know, Lenny Kravitz might offer you a million dollars or something. Or shush you. But on the other hand, <laughs> <laughs> if you come here expecting to see celebrities on every street corner, you'll be sorely disappointed. Sorely disappointed. <laughs> well, and also, like, like when I hung out in West Hollywood, there were famous people everywhere, but they lived there because they're the only people who can afford to live in that neighborhood, even back then. I think sometimes people come to Hollywood thinking Hollywood's going to be Hollywood. Oh, and no. it's like, oh, no, no. Hollywood is not Century City. And Hollywood is kind of like touristy. And, and like if crap. parts that aren't touristy are kind of gross. <laughs> I try to tell people that like Hollywood is actually like the hood. <laughs> like you'd be hard. Per you, you'll get your car broken into if you go a couple blocks off. People think I'm playing when I say that. <clears throat> so, Kilroy, how much Latin do you know? Do you watch Scorpius all the time? What's your What's your story with that? The Baltic will speak English or, or Russian in a hundred years, I guarantee. You. <laughs> hey, to all my Latvian people, I love you and thank you for watching. I just had to randomly say that. I only speak facts. Baltic languages are disappearing just because I write in a comical and sarcastic way does not make it un un untrue. I just have head over heels stuck in my head. Something happened and I'm head over heels. Good song. Don't break my heart. Don't break my heart. No. <laughs> It's hard because, like, I'm all for, you know, the whole, like, world sharing everything and we're all communicating and togetherness and that's great. But the trouble is when that happens, then the, the sad side is you often, like, lose a lot of really interesting cultures and traditions and languages and but we're already halfway there do you know what the official maritime language is no matter what country you're from mm. it's english and the same with with <laughs> flights airplanes yeah. although i did send you that one with the scottish air traffic controller. that was <laughs> trippy i watched that one that one was trippy <laughs> But it's true, like every like it's in English, so we're already kind of diluting it to begin with. Because if you're in the Navy, if any Navy, any Navy, you speak English. <clears throat> oh man. I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying that that's a a good thing either. <laughs> and now that you have 
that you all have been suggesting in YouTube chat. I am going to get them suggested. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> I said that today on um on Rashan's stream about how every song we listen to gets recommended in my in my recommendations now. Every song. Every song. English is maritime and flights. The official language of aviation and radio communications is English too. Wow. Scottish is not English. Did you watch the Scottish guy on the roof? <laughs> One of my favorite videos to watch, though, is uh, Alexis ver Alexa versus Scottish people. <laughs> that, is, that is the greatest stuff to watch on YouTube. They're like, oh, like they're screaming at their A word. Like, why don't you understand me? <laughs> I know how that is, man. I know how <laughs> that is. <laughs> it's not even judgment. That's that's me being like, okay, other people have these problems too. I was trying to send a text message to a friend I was meeting up with, and I was driving, and so I was using, you know, voice control, and it kept saying back, you know, I'd say something like you know, i'll be there in 10 minutes and it would send back you know this tree has nice leaves is that what you want to send i'm like no and it just it just kept getting worse so finally i just sent whatever it was and you know it was a joke the person had no clue what it was and i look i saved a screen cap of this text that it sent and i have no idea what it was i was trying to say it was that far from what i was actually saying <laughs> Do you know my voice text? You know, they'll mess up everything except for when I say, oh, F word. They'll get the F word. <laughs> Mine are literally like, oh, blah, 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 mistake, mistake. Oh, F word. And then it sends. <laughs> you didn't understand a word I said, but you got that F word in. Good <laughs> old. You didn't even boy. change it to duck for <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've typed it in so much in my phone that it does not. When I type in duck, it says the other word. <laughs> my phone has adapted to my English. <laughs> my Alexa speaks in an Indian accent reminds me not to get scared, dog. I actually really like the Indian accent. I had it on my phone for a while just because it's pleasant to my ears. But I didn't want to be accused of, you know, things that were not true. So I took it off. Mine was uh, English and it switched back to the original voice. Mm. Well, that was a couple of phones ago. I guarantee you if I, one of these phones, it probably has an English accent. <laughs> you can set it to whichever one you want for each of your 10 devices. It made me feel, I, you know, as an American, we, we, we're we suckers for the British accent. Utter yeah. and complete suckers. <laughs> so I had it on there for a while. I watched um, Tom Swift, and I really liked the character Barkley. So my <laughs> phone has, has a sort of the closest I could get to it. My friends are like... My friend said, why do you have a black country accent on your phone? I'm like, it's the closest I could get to Barkley. <laughs> Dog says that you should just say to your A word, A word, change your voice. You know, we have a working relationship right now. I like how things are going. I don't want to change anything. <laughs> The A word and I are getting along. <laughs> Says the guy who's scared to say the um, name out loud because it's going to turn on. <laughs> a big, a big reason for the phones having different accents is so that when you speak with your own accent, it will understand you. Um, so they really need to do a Scottish one and an Irish one. That would be good too. Or is there an Irish one? The English one made me feel like I was a billionaire with a really fancy butler. <laughs> made me feel like Batman. Basically made me feel like Batman. But again, Americans are suckers for English accent. So it just made me feel fancy. I was watching. Um, is it? On, I think it was on. Um, it's a Southern thing. The YouTube channel. And it was. um what if your device had was 
was Southern. <laughs> it's the people are trying to go out. It's directing them to their mom's house. <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> Do you know, um, I need to find out why it does that. Alibaba, the A word, always turns itself down. So are you sure Alexa's like with you? She's probably tired of my loud, screamy, shrill voice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I turn down, it'll mo it'll modulate. <laughs> you know what the sad thing is? I scream at it louder. I'm like, oh, Liza, why aren't you loud? <laughs> I think I just have an inner ear problem. The problem with dealing a Scottish or Irish one is there are no are a million different Scotch and Irish accents. True, true. It is but very it would be true. a start. It would be a start. They only have one English one, and there are all kinds of English accents. So. <laughs> That there's nuances, but like I can take someone from Alabama and someone from Seattle and they'll completely understand each other. Mm, I don't know. I've had some people struggle. Southern people being understood and understanding people from from the West Coast. I'm trying to be nice. You're going to make me say it, huh? You're going to make me say it. I've been to Louisiana, too. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time. Baton Rouge was beautiful. <laughs> My boyfriend was was from the Appalachians, and he brought his cousin, who had, I think, about one of the thickest Southern accents I have ever heard. The poor guy, all he ordered was pizza because he couldn't be understood by when we'd go to a restaurant. The restaurant, like, he had no idea what they were saying. Oh, that's he was Hades. Afraid of California food. That's <laughs> No, man, that's Hades. That's when I'm like, I fear for that. The day that people won't understand me. Like, that, oh, that's hate. That's like a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> Virgin, Virgin Mobile Canada has an English proper voice female. Mm. That was another thing. Um, on my other phone, the voice was a dude, which I don't have a problem with. It really made me feel like I had a fancy butt. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't give me an option if it's a man or a woman, you know? Yeah, Maybe I want to rotate it. They no, do. Not for, at least on, on my, I'll show you. And like on my Spanish one, when I had my phone half English, half Spanish, whenever I would do the um, the Spanish, whenever I would hear it out, it would come out in a um, guy's voice. They they have they have male and female voices for all of the languages. I haven't done this in like three or, or four most years. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> my my uh, I had a family member that went completely senile and stopped speaking English. Mm. And Good so thing you I, speak Spanish. I had to. I yeah, but I had that phone on me at all times because they were from there. You know, it's a little bit different. <laughs> And I so learned from them, and I still didn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> All of my Alexas have different names, so. Oh, my God. So, inconsiderate streamers who don't realize the A word is annoying. Do you know what's really funny? When I first got mine, um, anytime somebody would say A word, blah, 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 it would do it. Because it would pick it up off the speakers, you know. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh, boy, did I figure out how to switch that. I figured, I figured out that one. <laughs> it responds to me and hands. <laughs> and because hands ask it such crazy questions, like if you ask it a really off question, it'll ignore you. Oh, really? Hmm. Alexa, what are you? I'm Alexa. To learn more about me, just ask. Alexa, what can thank you. My pleasure. Just doing my job. Or if you ask her, like today, I asked the A word how many um, kids Bob Marley had. And the A word started giving me a tour on every kid. Bob Marley has an army. I don't need to know. I just wanted a number. <laughs> like we all know he had a literal football team of children, <laughs> like a literal, both sides. <laughs> My friend got one, and his daughter's name was Alexa. Imagine how fast that became a problem. She was 13 and now has... Wow. That's awful. But you know what? I'm going to say it 
because she kind of was a real one. And if you're watching, um, um, I, I used to have a friend named Karen. She was from Ireland. <laughs> and could you imagine how much she hated it when that name became like a title? And she yeah. really, she really was though. Like, no, no. You, could, you couldn't mess with her. You couldn't mess with her. She would not back down from you. She would not. <laughs> She came to this country because of the trouble. So she was just as American as all of us, you know, but like she's from Ireland and she, she she's not scared of me. She's not scared of anyone. <laughs> and so she one day she told me, she's like, I hate that Karen title. I don't know why people made that name so bad. <laughs> Bob Marley's son was in Ottawa and was on the university football team. Man, I, I want to know. Let's see if the internet will tell me. Give me a number. How many? I ask so many questions. My phone's like. <laughs> children. How many children did Bob Marley? Let's see if it pops up. Twelve. 12 that's i'm sorry that's not both sides but that's enough that's a football team with alternatives that's like <laughs> that's uh that's a whole basketball team plus backups how many um how many ladies had all these children <sighs> Death of 36 Milan, the champ singer had 12 children by his re by his widow Rita Marla, who had five kids. But Rita let one of the wives live at the house. Very famously. Like one of the like he had quite a few. Let me tell you, let me make you that. Let me make myself big. I'm not that gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Now Rita Marley was an adult. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am vengeful. Vengeful. My friend's girlfriend is called Alexa. He still hasn't got the joke. When you wake up, does she tell you what the weather is doing? <laughs> oh, he's a bit of an idiot, by the way. <laughs> Oh man. All right, I remember I'm, I'll go ahead. There was a um a birth control company that thought they would call themselves um Yasmin or something like that. And a very popular name amongst the, some um, Muslim groups and <laughs> the company ended up having to change their product name because they're like, no, you're, you're not doing that to the name of our lovely ladies. <laughs> so I remember like, that. <laughs> I remember that. That's crazy. Is that why they, that, is that why it's not around? Well, they changed it to um, like Yaz, I think. They yes. It. The only reason but, I say that is because we live in one of the only countries on earth where pharmaceutical companies advertise everywhere. Mm, yeah. So they have those catchy, catchy commercials. <laughs> <laughs> or like Ozempic has taken over that. Oh, oh, it's magic. Yeah, they now own the rights to the song. The guy um, has an infomercial. I watched it, <laughs> and I hope I'm never hurting for money that bad. <laughs> but what, if, if a corporation wants to come to me, like Husqvarna or Singer, I will gladly sell out. I was gonna say, <laughs> like, what's your number? If you had a, you know, a famous song you'd written, would you, would you say, would it? Would it matter to you? Like, is there something that you would just say, no, you're not using my song? Or as long as it wasn't anything that I was like completely against, because I wouldn't want 
you see, here's the problem with like in the future, people aren't gonna sing the oh oh it's magic song, they're gonna sing the oh oh exempic song. Mm. And so where's that where like they're erasing the song basically? Well, and now that company has rights to now both versions. I guess you have to figure. It's like, okay, were people still singing my song? Uh, do I care? Am I going to just laugh all the way to the bank? I mean. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm a warmongering capitalist like every other American. Like, I do have a price. Do not get me wrong. <laughs> Dog says, most people are stupid. I think it started when you sent your apprentice to the engineering store to get a bubble for a spirit level. <laughs> I have a very nice, like old, old wooden level that I'm going to restore. I got it just, you know, I like old tools and things. So it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have broken glass or anything like that. So. And then Kilroy says, oh, wait, no, hold on. Um, oh, goodness. <laughs> Doc says, or tartan paint. <laughs> and Alibaba says, plus, knowing the industry, when the product dies, the song will die with the product. Mm. And Kilroy says, that song hasn't played on the radio in 10 years. Nobody was listening to that song. I would have sold it, too. Yeah, there's something to be said for that it's like it's one of those where you hear it and you're like oh yeah that song but how many times a day are you listening to it do you still you know have the album are you singing it in your head <laughs> i just thought it was weird i'm not a purist but i was like oh my gosh like i wonder how much money they gave him i wonder what his price was it was <laughs> probably high too they probably gave him millions but you know, if you're a, a fella of a certain age, then millions will go far. I'm not even saying this to be mean. Like, I just wouldn't want to be like Dexy and the Midnight Runners. He played that song forever. Like he doesn't he, he still play that song? He never stopped. But you know, I think I said before, better to be a one hit wonder than a no hit. <laughs> and no hit, um, that hit. song. We can dance if you want to. We can stay all night and something, something, something. They're still playing too with the scorpions. All of them are still are still like <laughs> your fluid is another classic. <laughs> there was that house restorer lady in Detroit, and she would always talk about elbow grease. And she said people would write in asking where to buy elbow grease. But now there's a product called Elbow Grease. I was about to say, if people are that dumb, I'll market it right now. I will. <laughs> I love the safety dance. I still bump that song. <laughs> we can dance. All I love that. The video is hilarious. That is like peak MTV, that video. I'll be back. Oh, man. Now I have the safety dance stuck in my head. <clears throat> I still seek, I, you know, I think it's because I grew up watching MTV music videos. I love watching all of those videos. And the funny thing is, there's certain videos that I wouldn't have watched as a kid that I watch now because I can appreciate good music. <clears throat> I am almost done with this. I'm slowly attaching the arms. This has to be the most normal shirt that I've made in a long time. But we're going to see how it ends up. I wouldn't send a lackey for a transparent window. He went bless his cotton socks. <laughs> I would... Uh... I, uh, man, if you, I would have left. I would have left and ate my lunch. Been like, oh, this guy's off his freaking rocker. 
I've legitimately worked for somebody who I was like, how did you get here? Because you're kind of crazy. Right, let's see if my crazy way is working or not. Oh, it is. Okay. Perfect. Oh, that actually worked. As he has the safety dance black. We can dance if we want to. Perfect. Perfect. Transparent windscreen. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, whoops. All right. So I'm going to check my arms. Make sure there's no daylight. I'm going to try this on before I add the collar. I did not cut this in the middle like it should have been. So we're going to find out how this fits together. <laughs> I am all about being non-conventional, so we're going to find out. I use the pattern as a guideline because I'm going for more of a long sleeve shirt. And this oopsie material was just screaming, uh, make a decent shirt out of me. So we're going to find out. There's also the new guy that, it, that if you kink the wire, it'll stop the electric like a hose. Yikes. Well, these things are a rite of passage. That lackey is no doubt tormenting his own lackey now. Well, where I live, hazing is highly illegal. <laughs> you get sued for anything. Well, I live in the land of lawyers. Like, let's be real. <laughs> so you can get sued for anything here. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to switch my angle. You can't be mean to people where I live. On the job, in the state of California, it is illegal to um, not be a nice person at your job. <laughs> I'm not even being funny. You can treat the customers like like uh, crud, but you can't treat each other that way. <laughs> oh. We even have weird um, road rage laws now. <laughs> oh this is gonna fit hopefully so if you hear any ripping it's um my head trying to get through <laughs> yeah <clears throat> excuse me it is true though dog where i live like you are not. A, well, California is different. You cannot harass someone on the job at all. If you if they feel like they're harassed, you're going to lose yours. <laughs> oh, did that actually fit? Did the head hole actually fit? Oh, wow. Let me um, switch the camera. Oh, whoops, wrong one. <laughs> do you know what's so funny? Every time I do this, I'm like, I don't know if I should add a collar or not. <laughs> the sleeves are cut um, a little bit more precise because this is a shirt. This is meant to be a shirt that you roll the sleeves, but I love this. I love this, the design of this. Oh, that's perfect and the cuffs are perfect <laughs> i always go for the hardcore emo look where like the cuffs are halfway down but this looks perfect i might keep it like this <laughs> i absolutely love um how this came out beam me up scotty shirt should I add a, I still have a ton of Starfleet patches. Should I put a Starfleet patch on this one? This could be a doctor shirt. This could totally be the doctor shirt. One of the reasons um, the arm is different because this is cut in three different pieces. The arms are a little bit more intricate, but I love how they come together. <laughs> <laughs> I should add 
Thank you, Joy. Thank you. I really was reluctant because it's been a while since I've made th this shirt and I've gained a little bit of weight. <laughs> I thought you were making a button up. Well, I decided to not. Um, I kept the middle. I'm going for a handsome boy modeling school. And oh, so I'm going to put a collar on this, but I'm really liking the cut right now. <laughs> I've kind of fallen in love with the way it looks. Mm -hmm. But that's just because it fits nice. Very nice. Very nice. We have been going for two and a half hours. I, I will add a collar. Man, my Friday sews is going to be... It's only Monday. And I've already made a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've made like three or four things already. This is this definitely is. Uh, do you know it's because I talk about Star Trek all the time. This is definitely uh, Doctor Blue. That is kind of where our mind goes now with all the Star Trek talk. Well, I'm sitting in a room with a Klingon flag, so. Mm -hmm. a, a constant reminder to think Trek. Thank you, Olive Baba. It does fit nice. If anybody is canned for sending a newbie to the stores for wheelbarrow steering rack should be sued. The company for fun impeachment. In the state of California, any kind of hazing is illegal on the job. Any kind of harassment, any if it is even, and I'm speaking from the employer who I have to watch the video every year. <laughs> We're little, at least in my state, you can't be mean to people on the job. You can be mean to the other people. That look, kind of looks like a scrub shirt. <laughs> this is oopsie blue. <laughs> because, and, I, and the funny thing is, is that this pattern said it took three yards. I made this shirt out of a two-yard cut because I still have the other one. Oh, wow. How much do you have left over from the two yards? A good amount, too. Enough to make the collar. <laughs> nice. But I think it's how you utilize that particular... They're saying, like, you know, you cut a pattern, then you completely cut up and, and completely negate all the fabric that's above it, you know? Mm. Well, also, you didn't make the um, button placket. Um, instructions are guidelines. Well, no. <laughs> Co-host who, co who's actually ship. flying the I'm ship. I'm saying serve <laughs> fabric. <laughs> and now you have fabric to line another hood. <laughs> I can <laughs> So if I set an appropriate an apprentice to the shop for some spirit level bubbles, I'd get a huge fine. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're it's illegal to be mean in the state of California. <laughs> at least on the job you can get sued and it's not about um it's it's not about doing it once or twice it's the habitual action so if you are um consistently mean to people you'll get canned you can get sued hmm. kelly doesn't get fun killer right hurdy wordy feelings it's all the kale we eat in california and sunshine <laughs> so I would like to request some support here. I need moral support. Um, I have I have the lovely hand stitched, tucked ruffle on my pirate shirt, and I'm about to seam rip it off. So everyone say some kind words in their hearts for me as I undo the hours of hand stitching well it didn't take me hours but you know it felt like hours maybe i don't know but happy ripping. trails thank to you. you thank you until we meet again i appreciate it thank happy you happy trails to you until we pirate again <laughs> Who needs sunny weather when we spend time together? Happy trails. That's the Van Halen version. To you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna give myself some balloons. <laughs> happy trails. Now I have the Van Halen happy trails stuck in my head. <laughs> 
Now that was a phase. I listened to that album over and over. Hot for Teacher reminds me of driving fast in my car. That I that song, you know, it's problematic nowadays, shall we say? But it's because we're politically I like correct. It. I had a crush on Mrs. Wright in the third grade. She's got oh man. She's got to be in her 70s by now. Hey, Miss Wright, if you're out there, I'll still go out with you. <laughs> oh, man. Even if she was in her 20s back then, like, she's like. <laughs> I just hear that vibey guitar and the, the drums. Dun, 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 dun. And he starts talking. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Got it bad, got it bad, pirate got parrot it bad. is weepy eyed. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is teaching a new guy not to be messed messed about in the workplace a crime? The young noob learns on the job. You know why? At least where I live, um, it's they're anti hazing. The trouble is, uh, and I don't even want to say. It. I'm going to say it really quick. There were a couple newer issues that got grandfathered into the law and it actually helped people out. So if you are habitually mean to people and you say awful things to people, you can lose your job where I live. And it's not like it's not like a joke all, you know, in in good spirited fun. The same thing with like sexual harassment, you know, like it ended up where where people were like being harassed and so then they had to take a hard line because people couldn't seem to understand nuance and totally. you know i'll be right back all right so you know like a little joke with the new guy and everyone has a good time and they feel like they're part of the team is great but then you have like the meanie and the poor new guy goes home crying every night because he's so miserable on the job and it's kind of how do you how do you codify people who can't seem to understand the difference between for the people who can't understand the difference between the two i don't know it's then you end up with like no fun but so he left i have to be entertaining i don't know did I show you the toolbox I brought? This was, I was been cleaning out my garage and this was in the garage. It's been used, but I don't know where it came from. It's empty now. And so I have like a box of bits and pieces for current house projects, but um, I'm not really a yellow fan. I think cause a lot of times yellow just doesn't like me. So I'm going to try uh, taping off the handle and then this clear little tub on the top and I'm going to try painting it I have some paint that's supposed to adhere to sand to plastic we'll see if that's true I'll give it a little sand and <sighs> go to town oh, sorry okay. I had to I had to turn off all the lights because my son has friends at the power company mm. I've officially turned into my mother. <laughs> Why are all these lights on? Who has friends at the power company? Do you work for the power company? <laughs> I remember my mother would say sometimes, money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> and I would always feel a little bit resentful. I'm like, you could have just said a no. Like, I know money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> same thing. The same thing happened in California, Kilroy. We, and like, I know we don't have laws that are much different than anywhere else. You just can't be habitually mean to people. At least where I live. <laughs> yeah. And you we shouldn't even have laws for that. <laughs> yeah. People need some common sense. And they need to read the room. But unfortunately... A lot of people don't seem to have that ability. And California does get a lot of gruff because we are the kale state that sues everybody. We are the land of lawyers. So things are a bit more legislated here because everyone sues. <laughs> it's hard to like, I mean, that part of the problem though, is that's how it's set up. Like there was, there was this lady 
and her little nephew like ran into her you know just messing around ran around a corner or whatever knocked her down and she like broke her leg or i don't know something like that and in order to be able to have the homeowner's insurance pay the medical bill she had to sue her nephew and it's what? like oh, I don't I don't want to sue my nephew. Like that makes it seem like something that it isn't, but she had to file a claim, which is, you know, like a lawsuit. It needs a hammer wrench and some loose screw. <laughs> There's no clue where they came from. That's a toolbox. <laughs> you know, I told Warney the other um, night, like, it one of my biggest complaints in life is the newer generation doesn't know basic things. Like I get it, but I still can't be mean to them. I recently was confronted with a young man who has the certifications to do everything on earth. He didn't know how to sweep. He told me he had never used a broom in his life. And I said, how did you get through your life? Okay. <laughs> that brings up a whole other problem. Why is this? See, now chores is not child labor. Chores is teaching kids how to look after themselves when they grow up or go to a job where they have to sweep. Yeah, and a 22-year-old machinist looked me in the eye and said he'd never touched a broom. And I, it took everything in me to be like, you're lying. But like, I didn't say it. <laughs> I didn't say what I, I, I grabbed the broom. I said, this is how you do it. And I stood there. I stood there in parent style, like, okay, now show me that you know how to do it because <laughs> now I want to make you feel like you're five. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, I don't, I don't have a problem with, okay, let <sighs> me, let me think about high phrases. I don't like, eat, like, if you don't know something, that's okay. We don't all know everything. And sometimes you just haven't been informed about something. And so that's like, okay. Well, I, I don't agree with your upbringing, but you don't know how to sweep. So let's show you let's show you how to do this and we'll move on with our lives. I oh. absolutely am a hover parent. I coddle my child, but he also knows how to deep clean a bathroom. He knows how to sweep. He knows he cooks dinner because mm -hmm. of something that you told me. I make him cook every other night now. <laughs> what, he oh, has wait, a life skill. What did I tell you? <laughs> that you were acquainted with 20-something-year-olds who didn't know how to cook. Oh. Mm. It hurt my feelings. And mm. now, a year later, my son now um, cooks for real. Like, full. he cooks better than I do. Because <laughs> <laughs> he follows instructions properly. Sir, you can buy a broom <laughs> from the dollar store. You can teach yourself how to sweep for two fifty. I was so mad. Because you have to, like, you, man, and just to step on the floor, you have to have all kinds of certs. You can't just fill out an application and have no skills. But, I mean, sometimes you don't even know what you don't know. You know, like, like, how to clean a pan. Like, you don't know that there are special scrubbies that'll get the <laughs> stuff off without scratching the pan or that they make, that they make you know, dish soap and they also make bonhomie and my 14 know, year old son think. knows the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, there's a broom and then you can get like a small broom that makes it easier to get stuff in the dustpan. What? Or they make dustpans. What? <laughs> What's it called? That little <laughs> shovel thing for getting the, the floor trash into the trash can. <laughs> I put my American socks on in the dark. The heel of the sock was on the top of my foot. I was uncomfortable for two seconds. I'm suing the sock company for a million, <laughs> squillion dollars. American <laughs> you know what's sad, dog, is that um, that might get through. But we have slap laws here where you, like, if the lawsuit's really flip frivolous, it won't go through. Like, we have real hardcore anti-slap laws. You can't be sued for, like, telling someone they smell like cheese. <laughs> well, actually, if you say it habitually, if you say it once, you can't be sued. 
<laughs> what if they habitually smell like cheese? Then you they wouldn't even be hired. <laughs> I would I would catch that in the in the uh, interview process. That's what a lot of drill instructors have to do: teach the new recruits how to sweep and clean because they've never been shown it. Thank you, thank you. I scratched the pan up anyways. <laughs> oh no! But Good do you boy. think that's a generational thing? And I'm not blaming the internet, but do you think that's a generational thing? Like, I just like we just have classic skills. I'm sorry, it broke up. We what? Do you think that's a generational thing? And then you said, like, we were classically trained. Ah, uh, we were classically trained to like sweep and like you know. Well, it depends because you know sometimes the girls were taught, but the the fellas were not taught. I was taught from well, I was the last of a tribe, so my mom was like, "No, you're gonna." learn to do laundry because i don't want to do it you're gonna learn to cook i was there the day she quit she lined up all the remaining family members and because i was the youngest my mom was like prove to me you can cook you can cook an egg and everyone nervously stood there and i cooked an egg and my mom was like okay good i quit and i'm not kidding you she never made his breakfast again she like she was tired of unappreciative children and i don't blame her mm. but we all swam she she was like sink or swim kids <laughs> we all swam <laughs> Thanks for being so compelling that I have that I have no sleep. My so-called life sucks. <laughs> hey, I'm my, my so-called life is here for you, even in the UK. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, dog. Good morning. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> what time is it right now in London? And I know that's probably where you don't live. In London, it's 6:43 a.m. Good morning. Oh man, if, if I haven't had any sleep and it's 6 43, I like I'm like sitting there. I'm like, well, should I like go to Denny's or something? Or should I go to McDonald's or <laughs> oh I think there have always been kids who didn't know how to do their stuff. It's just it's just that you never heard about it before, or you figured it out right away because you had to. <laughs> That's so true. Or people didn't talk about it. Like in my job, not being able to drive a forklift is like, why do you work here? Or, or like, there are certain things where like, oh, you lied. Like one of the biggest insults is someone's like, oh, you lied on your application. <laughs> <laughs> Get your cup of tea, dog. <laughs> Never go to Denny's. I went to Denny's once. Oh. Aurora, Colorado. Everything was sticky. So, as someone who has been to Waffle Houses all across the country, it depends on that particular store. The one by my house has gone to Hades. The oh, one yeah. in downtown LA that's near um, what's now called Crypto Arena is amazing. I recently um, went there for nostalgia's sakes because <laughs> the pantry was filled. So I went to the Denny's, which is a block and a half away. And it was amazing. And they still have moons over my hammy there, too. I want to say for the record, this cap is terrible. <laughs> oh, here we go with the plastic cap. <laughs> I agree with you in a lot of ways, but they have manufacturers have figured out a cheap way to cap everything. And it's with that weird plastic. I have exacto knives like that. Well, Same cap. now I've got the blade coming through the cap. I can't get the cap over the nut that holds the blade in place. <sighs> Arg. Great. Now I've torn it. I've like literally cut it twice. Oh, finally. I did not cut my finger. So oh. it's a win. And I have removed my lovely pin tuck neck ruffle. Happy it, had two <laughs> it had two problems. One, um, I accidentally cut it out of the bright white instead of the natural white fabric. And two, I, it just, I don't know. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't flattering. 
I don't, it just, I don't know. But Keep now it I have for a, something else. Exactly. I have a lovely ruffle. I'll put it on, put it on something else. Just not right next to my face. <laughs> you can make like a ring pillow. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with that. I made a sheath for my exacto knife out of duct tape and strips of old tape measure. Mm. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. I have some um, some Sugru moldable moldable. It's kind of like clay, but it hardens to to um, a, like a, a flexible plastic. I think I'm going to make myself a functional cap for this before I cut my finger open. <laughs> because I um, have exacto knives that are in giant cases, I try to keep the case intact. So as well, long as I have like the, because I, I have exacto knives that come with like every kind of hook blade, every kind of blade you can think of. But with that being said, in my top drawer, I'm scared to reach in because there's a loose exact. That's beautiful. See, I have that same set. Wonder twin. <laughs> this did not come with that. <laughs> this came in a little like plastic envelope with a cardboard backer. Can I ask you a? Uh... Oh, question. Did you get that from Amazon? No, I did not. It's a Tula Pink brand, and I got it from the Featherweight shop, which, you know, it's it's a lovely product, except for the cap, you know? 1998. Went to a Denny's and was introduced to my first sweet and salty <laughs> meal, steak and blueberry pancakes. Tasty. I still have chronic <laughs> diarrhea to this day. <laughs> You're going to make me go on camera? I'm not even saying this to be mean, but I've had your food too. So we're not going to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I, no, I've seen people like dog. See, but dog knows that I absolutely adore and love dog. I've seen people get in full fights over biscuits and gravy online. I've seen people not talk to each other. <laughs> there was this one thing on Twitter where I couldn't believe it, but American people and British people were legitimately fighting on Twitter and they were like, but this and that. And I came in and I'm like, um, at this point, we are identical. Like we all have bad teeth. We all eat crummy food. Like you guys are throwing the same insults at each other. Like <laughs> it's all relative to where you come from, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I like a nice English breakfast. You know I do too, but that tomato will put me out for a oh. week. <laughs> you you like it if it comes in its own individual little dishes. <laughs> I am an American like that. I like my food separated. Judge me. <laughs> That's the America way. We divide everything. Oh gosh, it's getting late. I'm telling Inzo. Twitter is just fights. It's a skull. It's a skull, not a... Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't miss that fight. Oh, my. I do not miss that fight. <laughs> that, like, that was a real fight that people would have. That was a real one. I, um... I have pirate's I teeth, too. <laughs> me, too. Gilroy, me, too. <laughs> I offered my um, my friend's little boy a biscuit, and I forgot that he was half English and spent a lot of time with his English father. And so for him, a biscuit was an entirely different sort of thing. And, you know, now I think a regular biscuit, American biscuit slash scone for other parts of the world is is a delightful treat. But, you know, when you're like five, <laughs> a scone is not a cookie. <laughs> the look of disappointment on this poor child's face when he discovered that I was not offering him a cookie. <laughs> if you put buttermilk in it, shape it however you want. I'll eat it. I don't care if it's a triangle, if it's a circle. I don't care at this point. I just want it. They're, they're call it what you want. Scone biscuit. They're amazing. <laughs> a biscuit by any <sighs> other name <laughs> would taste as taste as delightful. 
Biscuits is an American. Biscuits in America is a dry British scone. That Who isn't a rasher. It? That that is bacon. No, it isn't a. Eh? That is strips. <laughs> Back to bacon. <laughs> oh gosh, Tom Green. I that is, like. I really don't like Tom Green, but he gave one of the greatest answers where people are like, "What do you call Canadian bacon in Canada?" He's like, "We call it bacon, fool." Like, what do you think we call it? <laughs> Aren't biscuits cookies? What? No. <laughs> to to respond to dog, if your biscuit is dry, <laughs> you've got a problem. You didn't make it right. <laughs> Bacon sausage, fried egg, beans, fried tomatoes, black pudding, blood sausage, mushrooms, fried bread, and a cup of tea. Now that's a meal. I would need my valves. My heart valves scraped after. If I ate that every day, I wouldn't be able to. I'd be breathing like. <gasps> <gasps> Dog here, you can't sell blood sausage. It's illegal in Canada. Canada is like California. <laughs> Somebody, the legislature said they make it out of what? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love American biscuits and gravy. Biscuits in the UK is a cookie. I make my own biscuits and gravy at my house. But white gravy is easy to make. Like, easy to make. And if you don't know how to... If you're my age and don't know how to make white gravy, move out of your mom's house. <laughs> you can sell blood sausage here, but good luck finding people who... Exactly. People who want to buy it. And the only reason I know this... Is because there uh, I've known people with certain cultural or cultural or dietary requirements, and there's a lot of things that they just don't sell or are illegal where I live. I I have never tried it. I I couldn't get past the the concept. Have you tried it? Yes, because I told you the other stuff I've tried to. I did like it. I did not. But, you know, I, now I know I don't like it. Uh-huh. You know, there's other things that I don't want to say that I told you that I've had. <laughs> but that was more um, being eight years old and wanting to see my mom puke. Uh-huh. I haven't made white gravy from scratch for years. I use the cheap dollar white gravy packets. Just make, hey, same. I'm either way. I'm I'm either way. I am not a food I am not a food snob in any way. I'll even I know this is blasphemous and I might get kicked out of my own stream, but I'll even put bacon in a microwave if I'm hungry. <laughs> See, I knew that would I knew you would stop everything you were doing to give me a look on. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask you this again, even though I know the answer. Um, Water Nate, do you own a microwave? I do not. I have a very nice Japanese toaster oven. Um, Wadane, how do you get through life without a microwave? <laughs> <laughs> um, I put it in a pan and put it on the stove, <laughs> or I put it in the toaster <clears throat> oven, or... I don't understand Alibaba. Blood sausage is congealed pig's blood. A pork sausage is basically eyes, lips, ass, vague teeth, hoof... Yeah, sell those. It, well, in, in in America, like we eat sausage for everything. It's weird. It, laws are weird that way. I lived at a packing plant. We just have. It's just. It depends on what country you live. And let me tell you, they ship stuff off to other countries because nothing's going to waste. Mm. So if it can't be sold here, it's getting shipped off somewhere else. Yeah. I microwave anything. Most people who hate microwaves don't realize you can turn the power down and make the food <laughs> better. I'm not a stop oh, man. My son, I have been microwaving cup of noodles my whole life. A month ago, my son looked at me and he's like, really? I said, what? He's like, read the package. And I said, oh, I'll be darned. <laughs> I think that's probably because the lid is foil and you can't put foil in the microwave Oops. you don't have to run it pedal to the metal all the time i need that tattooed on my arm like memento <laughs> uh, 
I really don't know why they have it illegal, but it is. You know, in Alibaba, though, where I live, like a lot of stuff is illegal here, where it isn't anywhere else in America. So I get it. It's just weird regulations. Just because I don't want to eat it doesn't mean other people shouldn't be allowed to eat it if that's what they want to do. Can't sell and eat horrors here either, but I could in France. It's too stringy. I made a cup of noodles with boiling water off off the stove. I like the taste better. I, well, my son's all classy. We now have um, tea kettles just sitting on my stove, so it's a lot easier now. I just turn the I just turn the stove on, heat up the water. Yeah, my son has really classed up my life. <laughs> <laughs> How did you live without a kettle? With chili fries and coffee. <laughs> instant coffee to, you know I, I i gave you the speech i love nescafe that instant coffee that stuff and if you use a lot that stuff is jittery strong i'm gonna buy some for nostalgia says the guy who boo who in a bougie way drinks starbucks and this really bougie place by my house it's a coffee it's a coffee place i get beans from there too <laughs> I saw a video um, that there's a, oh dear, what country was it? Um, hmm. I'm trying to remember, but it was like, a, a, well, I think one of the Mediterranean countries and they would take the instant coffee and sugar and like whisk the heck out of it with, you know, with, with like a little bit of water and, like whisk it, whisk it, whisk it, whisk it, whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. Um, and then they would put the warm milk in it. And apparently it makes like incredible coffee when you aerate it like that. I've actually seen videos of people doing that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a, I'm not a coffee snob in any way, shape or form at all. I'll drink. I've said this. I'll drink the bougie stuff all the way to like Alcoholics Anonymous coffee. I do not care. If it's in a cup and it's leaded, I'll drink it. Here in Canada, it's very difficult to find a stove top kettle. They're all electric kettles. Wow. That's very UK. I've never understood coffee snobs. <laughs> I mean, I've been like that my whole life. I don't care. If it's leaded, I will drink it. I mean, there's something to be said for coffee that like actually tastes better but you're not always um pirates are not always necessarily in the <laughs> do i need to most, put my shirt on in the most shishi places <laughs> you know and this is back when i would like drive long distances um i'll drink gas station coffee i you know if it's lighted, I'll keep going. The only way I'm stopping about coffee is it has to be black. I'm a fancy pirate. I want my coffee to taste good. I've eaten horse in France. Can't describe the taste. It's chewy. Could have sworn I could have blown a bubble. That you sounds so unpleasant. Funny. I was... Um, I was so much more, you know why it's because I've sown my wild oats. When I was younger, I would like go out and seek these things as an adult. I know where that street ends. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this the other day, like I watched this whole thing about frog legs and I couldn't take my, I couldn't bring myself to do that. Like back in the day. But again, I am um, from a place where we don't do that. I don't judge people who do. It's not my place to, it's just not my thing. I think in sometimes it's it's what you grew up with too. Like, you know, you see the videos of the the English people or whatever and they're like peanut butter and jelly, are you mental? That sounds disgusting. And then, you know, they get That's some nasty. tutorials and they figure out that jelly does not mean jello and, you know, they put it together and they're like, "Actually, this is really good." So, you know, we eat other animals, and, and I'm maybe, obsessed maybe with... we're missing out on the frog legs. Well, I'm obsessed with fish, and I know someone who doesn't. 
And Sopa de Siete Mates is the greatest soup of all time. <laughs> there, there is this really like it's um there's a place in LA, it's called Pescado Majado. It just means the wet fish for anyone. <laughs> but they have this soup. It's called soup, Sopa de Siete Mates. It's the soup of the seven seas. It's the greatest thing on earth. But it's literally just everything they could fit in <laughs> in the soup, you know. It's just a fancy way of saying bouillon base. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good though. And they and because it's kind of a chainy ish kind of place, at least it's like deep in LA. I'm talking like Echo Park, like it's all over LA, but you can get it almost anywhere on this side of town. <clears throat> I've had a coffee machine now and use the pods. I will never drink instant coffee again. Either way, I, I, I'm weird. Where if, I, if it's coffee tasting, I'll drink it. Do you have a a Senseo, a Keurig, or an espresso machine? But then they make marmalade sandwiches. I'm not Paddington Bear. <gasps> I like marmalade, though. Me too. <laughs> and you know what? Marmalade and peanut butter is actually really good. <laughs> Ew. Snails and frogs are tasteless when in France. They're better. At everything with garlic. I like pesto. <laughs> People are weird about, about eating dog and cat, but I've spoken with American Indians and veterans who were stationed in Korea who did, and they said it tasted great. There you go. So true, dog. I, I, have, the, I have those two so much garlic. Yuck. My uncle used to would... say... Sorry. Oh. No, go ahead. My uncle used to say that nobody really liked lobster. They just liked the drawn butter. <laughs> I'll argue with that, though. I'm obsessed with lobster, but maybe it is the garlic butter. <laughs> and I've known people that have said the same thing what Kilroy just said. That people, I've known many a people. I actually have a family member who was born in Korea, but she's considered an American citizen because her parents were stationed there. Mm -mm. Oh, now I'm thinking about all the things that I... I'm, I'm thinking about all this exotic food. <laughs> Why do we always... We... You know what's so funny? We always end up talking about food. We are some hungry people here in the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's always pancakes and something extremely exotic. Oh, See, I've got a really good pancake recipe, too. From the vegetarian epicure, like the, oh, wow. the old one from the 70s. Oh, everything wow. I've made out of that cookbook is delicious. Highly recommended. I, um, within the past three years, purchased a stove that came with a giant grill in the middle. So that has improved my pancake making. <laughs> and I had this ancient 1960s, almost burned that house down waffle iron and it shorted out. Oh no. And somebody who absolutely loves me, aka my mother, <laughs> bought me a new waffle maker. And so now I guilt myself into making waffles all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have this amazing waffle maker. And it's all modern. Mine was uh, like, you know, how does this thing still work? Why, why is this thing? I found it at a thrift store and it, and it didn't burn the house down and it made amazing amazing waffles but i found out it was from the 60s i have my friend's grandmother's sandwich press not oh, like yeah. not like the panini grill but like the one that makes the little like i don't know like the ones with the shell imprint you know makes oh, the yeah. best grilled cheese oh my goodness Oh gosh, I w I went through this weird gourmet grilled cheese phase where I would go out of my way to add fancy stuff in grilled cheese. Mm. I I never make pancakes or waffles. More than once a year, I make them, and then I can't finish all of them without <laughs> thinking, "Why do I make these?" <laughs> That's me and pasta and rice every time. I can't make rice for less than a hundred people. <laughs> And every time I make pasta, I think I'm making it for the 101st. Like, <laughs> uh, it's 
I think everybody I see got at some point, especially if you live close. Now you you sound like a certain generation of people. I'm obsessed with Chinese food, man. You be nice. I'm obsessed with Chinese food. <laughs> hey, my coffee pot is from the 60s and it still works. You know what's so funny? I'm still mad at that Nelco um uh coffee maker that I have. I don't know why it cracked. I had it in this room. It's straight 1970s with the percolator on top and everything. Mm. I'm still mad about that. My Sunbeam A30 makes amazing coffee. Oh, y'all are mean. I'm upset. I don't care. My son tells it to me all the time. I'm going to say to him what I say to you. I'm going to say to you what I say to him. It tastes amazing. Like my father used to always say, if you really like what you're eating, don't look in the kitchen. Enjoy life. A grilled cheese is cheap white bread, butter, and American cheese. I get oh. I get like fancy, fancy. At least you said butter. <laughs> A good grilled cheese is some sourdough, extra sharp cheddar. If you want to go all crazy, maybe put some roasted bell peppers on it or something. But sourdough, strong cheddar, sharp cheddar, American cheese, uh, that's a misnomer. <laughs> and I know I'm being contrary. A lot of people love it. I'm, I know, doesn't deserve the name cheese. <laughs> if you have eaten out more than five times in your life, you have eaten out of a filthy kitchen. Exactly. Enjoy your life. Like, um, because when I was younger, I was really particular. And my pops would always tell me, like, hey, bro, chill out. Like, if you like what you're eating, don't. Like, he would literally tell me, like, enjoy this. Don't look in the kitchen. Don't ask who made it. Just enjoy it. <laughs> and that's Sometimes you just have to enjoy your meal. <laughs> and we were traveling and stuff, you know. So maybe, uh, maybe I have. But it all tasted good. <laughs> And we like with enough um, cayenne pepper or pesto, you could hide anything. I think I'm just obsessed with pesto. I think I just love pesto. Well, you're not alone on that. Oh, pesto on a grilled cheese. That would be good. I put seasoned salt outside. Oh, my grilled cheese, garlic, oh. and roast. I agree with Joy. That sounds amazing. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> I got to give Alibaba the win on the grilled cheese sandwich. I'm sorry, Kilroy. I am. Um, <laughs> I do love food. I, I try to um, find the certain joys in life. You should have seen my face when I when I made my own mashed potatoes from the um, potatoes in my backyard. I annoyingly were calling people and FaceTime me like, look, this came from my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, these are amazing. <laughs> They're real potatoes. And a friend of mine was like, have you ever had a fake potato? <laughs> <laughs> but it came from my backyard. Come on. Something I do satisfying I, about that. I do love food. Americans grasp on Jesus similar to the flirts grasp on me. Are you calling us flat earthers? <laughs> I will say though, like back in the day when I was into that stuff, every time I'd see a flat earther American, I was like, oh, not another one. Please stop talking. You're making this all look bad. <laughs> I'm I am a I've See, but it's different, though. I've been to Wisconsin. Where, you know, like someone, um, like my lovely co-host said the other day, where it smells bad half a mile away. And then you oh. go up and it is the greatest stuff you've ever had in your life. <laughs> yeah, that was when I was in, I was in Edinburgh. And I was walking up the Royal Mile with my mother and we kept like like is there some dead animal in the gutter or something and that was when we discovered that there was a cheese shop the next street over amazing cheese but wow it didn't smell like somebody had died 
The only time I ever freaked out Kilroy is there's this really famous guy that they duped and they took to a lake and he tried to prove um it was just some um, basically the guy was from my hometown and I was so embarrassed that the education system had failed. That's all oh, I'm saying. Yeah. Like, and you know, it's really funny by suburb standards, we received a college education compared to most kids. And this guy, he just proved that it didn't matter. <laughs> hmm. So it, so my investment was more because this guy was literally from my hometown and they went to a lake by my house and I saw the lake and I was like, Oh no. <laughs> But queso seco is amazing. Mm. It just means dry cheese. <laughs> it's it's uh, um, my a friend of mine calls it Mexican Limburger, but like a lot of people don't like stinky cheese. I do, mm. but I think it's because I have terrible taste buds because I smoked cigarettes for nineteen years, <laughs> and you do still smoke stuff. Yeah, same but it's effect. legal in the lower 48. No, I just mean that it has the same effect on your your tongue and stuff. Not like nicotine. Um, I'm going through all my old clothes. I can still smell nicotine on shirts that I haven't worn in eight or nine years. Hmm. Like, I have to wash them before I give them to the thrift store. because And it's so weird because I thought the smell was gone. And I'm picking up shirts and it still smells like Captain Black. <laughs> And I haven't smoked in a good, like, wow, since, like, 2016. College doesn't guarantee intelligence. I've met plenty of idiots with a $100,000 piece of paper. I always say that about Starbucks. Like, I worked at a Starbucks in West Hollywood. Every single person there had a degree with a bunch of letters behind it. And we were all working at Starbucks. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Um, there's a company and they started off making making realistic dolls of famous, famous people like like Louisa May Alcott and Einstein and, you know, like iconic figures. And the company was called the Unemployed Philosophers Guild. <laughs> I love that. The second you can buy top class PhD from some religious university above a dry cleaners, you know your education. <laughs> I said this in the last street. See, it's different though. I knew a lot of people that got that when ITT Tech and all these schools got discredited, it ruined their lives. Oh, I, had, was I had a good friend who received a legitimate education. He was had his certs and everything. And literally a decade later, he was told his, his certification is null and void and he had to go back to school. See, we were you were telling me about that. I disagree. If you if your institution was accredited when you got your certificate, your certificate should still count. If they've lost their accreditation, accreditation, um, then, you know, like, they can't be giving certificates out after that. But if everything was fine when you got your certificate, your certificate should not become null and void just because they messed up 10 years later. That's really messed up. It's in it. It's a certain generation. It's a lot of people like around my age and um, older, but it really messed up things yeah. around here. Yeah. And I, and I told the story, like they literally had a campus 15 minutes from my house on the freeway because um, we measure everything in time but um it was humongous and the whole it changed that whole area because okay you have a campus but there are stores around the campus there's people that go to restaurants near the campus that whole side of town shut down goodness yeah it was really sad my um my dad uh, actually did that. He became, he. it's the, what is it? The Universal Life Church or something? You just pay a fee and they mm. literally ordain you. <coughs> Excuse me. 
God's enrollments are declining now, though. So maybe they'll that'll change. It's no longer the automatic thing high school grads go for. And thank goodness for that. College isn't for anybody. I went to trade school and people talk trash about me. But like, you know, I went to trade school and I make more than people went to college. <laughs> I saw a video. On what you do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I saw a video that was saying that a lot of students aren't engaged because they're like, when am I going to use this? Because as you say, college is not for everybody. And meanwhile, we don't have enough tradespeople and technically skilled people. And this person was um, advocating the return of technical high schools. So if you know that you want to be a a computer programmer or a mechanic or an electrician or whatever, you go to the technical high school and you still get, you know, your normal like high school classes, but the focus is on trade and you come out with an actual skill so that you can be employed and our infrastructure doesn't collapse. Even in the artsy fartsy way, I know someone that went to an extreme, like an arts only high school in new york and they've made a ton of money in life yeah you know so i you know and but their whole life is geared towards the theater towards art but that they've they made it and mm -hmm. then and you know what they may be the exception and not the rule i want to know how many people from these schools actually did something but this person is like the standard where i'm from <laughs> yeah but, you know, we have a lot of, like, you can make a living as an actor without being, you know, Oscar winner of the year. Well, I mean, we have problems. The, the strike aside. But, okay, you know, but... like, we still need theater people. And then there are also technical, um, technical degrees for theater and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And then singing and like and you're also more likely to succeed if you have the training rather than if you just think oh you know what i think i can act i did that play in sixth grade and it'll be great sorry hans and i are having a philosophical discussion uh, oh no, it's right. okay america is good at dumbing people out of cash they worked out of that out that people were stupid and sold acres of them. That's like people who buy those plots for the, um, like, oh, I own a star. Do you? Well, you don't own it. You just get to name it. <laughs> I know somebody who actually bought a few. A few stars? <laughs> yes. And it's not me. It's not me. <laughs> Well, I thought it was weird because I walked in their house and they had all these giant plaques. They're like, I own blah, blah, blah. Or, or, oh, no, I'm sorry. They're like, blah, blah, blah is named after me. And I named this after this and this. <laughs> I mean, we can only do so many, you know, Kepler 10679, you know. I actually like that. Kepler 221B. Kepler 221C. I actually like that because then you can actually know where they are. But, well, you know, true, true. I read Scientific American, and that's how they identify any everything. <laughs> <laughs> there are trades in theater too. What do you think builds the set and runs and fixes the system? Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> it's just. People, oh, go ahead, please. Some people really like the behind the scenes. I have a friend who's a, a Broadway actor. And he's very excited because he, you know, his name's on the posters and all of that. But for a long time, he made a living like working behind the scenes in development because he's a skilled musician, could sight read music, wasn't afraid to, you know, be a character and and invest in it. And so when the when the playwrights and things needed to have something run and see how it would look and see what direction they want to go. They need the skilled people such as him who can act on the fly behind the scenes. Absolutely. Oh, have bye, a Joy. great night, Joy. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with the, with us here in the House of Sewing. <laughs> That's like, um, there's an actor. Um, she was on Babylon 5. Her name's Patricia Tillman. 
um, because of Facebook, I I sent her a friend request and she accepted. Nice. P- Patricia Gilman has been in more episodes of Star Trek than Michael Dorn. She's been in every movie, mm-hmm. but she um, she's also a stunt woman. She's been in more movies than we could possibly um, imagine. She's the backup. Like she's, she was like, yeah, I was in this Marvel movie and this was like, what she, because she's like, um, she's that height. Like she's like six feet tall. So she's that perfect height, you know? Six feet tall. (sighs) I didn't make it that far. Have a great night, Joy. Neither did I. <laughs> if, you st- if you stood on my shoulders, we'd be six feet tall. <laughs> we'd be a giant if you stood on my shoulders. I'm kidding. But like, I'm not tall either. I'm not claiming height. So don't feel bad. I was about to start in the Cygnus sector, 500 light years away. I was also bought an acre of the moon. I can't even get a dog up there to keep those. T- oh, God. <laughs> But see, with buying the stars, you have like the science, it's like plants. You have the botanical name, the scientific name, you know, plants, animals, and then you have the colloquial name. So we have, you know, there's the dog star, and then there's, you know, the other dog star. (laughs) That's like, um, there's a pulsar, which um, has been called the, it's called the Angolan eye, but there's like a technical name to it. I can actually show you where it is in the sky. At least if you live on the West Coast. <laughs> but I remember. Like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. When they were talking about that whole like planetary alignment and you'd see the pictures and that they said, oh, look, the planets are going to be all arranged in a line like this only happens every so often. And so I went out because to go and look at the planets in a line oh my word those pictures lied i thought it was going to be you know like right there and i figured out it's like one over here and then one next one over there and then the next one was way over there and it's like well sure they you know they were technically in a line but the illustration they lied (laughs) for as long as it took them to line up that's as long as it's going to take them to drift away from each other Oh, I was like, what's making all that noise? It's the um it's the combo VCR. It was rewinding. My head was <laughs> like, I was wrong button. I was like, what's going on in here? What is going what's that foreign noise? It's my VCR. This is Star Trek Doctor. I'm gonna put the insignia on this one. I think I have I think I have a full starship now. I have the captain, I have the red shirt. <laughs> And I am all TOS. Like, I think of myself as Picard, but let's be real. I'm way more Captain Kirk. Let's be real. (laughs) I'll fight a Gorn right now. (laughs) Which, we have to wait, what, two years? A year to see Strange New Worlds? It's too long. I'm ready now. They think we have patience. They better, like... They're filming a Section 31 show in this one town that I may or may not live in. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know what's happened. Looking at local news, some old guy stole a one-pound chocolate egg from a gas station. I hope I'm never in that position. Okay, so that's one of those weird moral dilemmas. If I saw the guy, I'd grab him and be like, bro, I'll buy that for you. I would. I would be like, dude, because, you know, I I carry a buck or two. I'd be like, dude, I'll buy that for you, brother. But was he just stealing it for the thrill or because he didn't want to pay? Or was he just, you know, broke and desperate for chocolate? It's different, though. Like, I told you, if I saw someone stealing, like, bread or something, I wouldn't say anything. If I was at the girl, I I don't know, but I've never been put in that position. So I say all these hoity-toity things, but I've never been put in that position. Mm. I saw Jupiter's four rings and four moons. Not often you can see that. My neighbor who um, used to live next door, he had a telescope that was six feet tall. Good gracious. 
And when Jupiter, it was so gaudy. I didn't realize how big it was until what was that? Uh, Venus crossing or whatever. Oh, he, he put one of those filters in the thing, stood in the middle of the street. And we all like little kids were like, whoa, like we could literally see it crossing <laughs> in front of the sun. It was cool. Wow. Oh, yeah. I wonder, you know what? For everything he sold, I wonder what he did with that thing. He probably took it with him because he was a total explorer. I haven't used a telescope. I have um five or six. I'm a uh, when I got divorced from, from my ex-wife, I went through this real hardcore Jack O'Neill phase where I sat in my backyard with a telescope and a beer, just depressed. But I actually learned something and I could tell you well on the West Coast where like every constellation, every star, we see Cassiopeia on the West Coast. And depending on what time of year it is, it's either a W or an M. <laughs> see, my problem with stuff like that is you look at the chart and you're like, oh, yeah, it looks just like this, clear as day. And then you go out and you look at the sky and you're like, now, where was that again? Because you, you kind of it's. it's I don't know. Like it loses a little something because of all the other stars up there. I have trouble finding constellations. Well, yeah, there's a new Star Trek here and there, but I bet this is their interest. They do, but they're filming it in my town, so they can't hide it, Ollie. And I knew, I know somebody. I got an insider who works for Amazon that dropped off packages there, and he turned a corner, and it was like literally a different planet because he drove on the set. <laughs> Mm, it looks more like chubby Spock will. I know the camera adds 10 pounds. <laughs> Thanks for calling. I'll take chubby. Please call me chubby. <laughs> I've been called bone skinny my whole life. I'll take that. I'll take it. <laughs> it was $8 in the gas station. It's in the middle of nowhere. So he had just, oh my gosh. That's crazy. I don't know. I see. I couldn't be a judge. They would hate me. I would let that guy go. I'd be like, "Here's eight bucks. Don't you know? No harm, no foul." I could. Be, I would be a terrible judge. Minus six feet. My brother won in a lottery. He didn't want it. Hmm. I got my mom a telescope years ago, but she hardly used it. And then I tried to use it recently, but the stabilizer had broken or something. We were trying to look at the moon and it was very difficult because the tape, the telescope wasn't holding position. I love that. I, that is, um, I used to pull audiences with that because I would just point a telescope at the moon. Mm -hmm. I, I miss that. <laughs> Where I have, I have a couple huge drum ones, but once I got introduced to my neighbors, I was like, oh, this guy's serious. Mm. It was literally bigger than me. <laughs> it's like that that um it's like that short I have of Modelo standing next to the um roll, which uh, makes me wonder like is the roll five five and he's five four? <laughs> I need to go see him. I keep on talking about my buddy the Modelo man. He should just have the egg up his jumper and pretended he was pregnant. The moon was too close for the six feet one. I have binoculars and monoculars to watch the moon. My binoculars are just little theater binoculars. They're not that strong. Do you know what I always want? I want the old school World War II Navy on watch binoculars. Those giant binoculars. Wow. If you're a collector, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you've seen any old school movie. <laughs> Oh. I'm obsessed with Sink the Bismarck. I have seen that movie so many times. I own four or five copies. <laughs> but if you see a movie like that, the binoculars are literally this big. I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not even telling fishing stories because they were they, you know, they were on ships and yeah. they had to be huge and they were in all directions and they literally had spotters back in the day. See, those things are so strong that you can see all the way 
to I'm trying to see what's what's directly on the same, they are the same so latitude. Expensive. You can see all the way to Shanghai. <laughs> I want brass binoculars so bad. I'm going to sit on my roof and just pretend that I'm in World War II. <laughs> it would just be me staring at the mountains at Griffith Park. No, is it? it I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Griffith Park Observatory. It is the strangest thing on earth. They have... You know, in, in in major cities, they have those things where you could look, overlook the city, you put a quarter in, and it's just giant binoculars, you know? It's the strangest thing to be on that hill and be able to look in different neighborhoods. And, and like, because I know the grid, you can look all the way out to the ocean on a clear day. Mm. It is the strangest thing to be able to see Venice from uh, Griffith Park. I made a mistake. You can't see Shanghai. You have to look at Japan. <laughs> I want brass binoculars now so bad. It's because their um, Ventura has a ton of thrift stores on their main street. It's all thrift stores. Well, I haven't been there in a while, but um, there's one thrift store where it's all the stuff you can't afford. And it has it in the display. It has a giant pair of those, but there's no way I'm going to pay an absorbent amount like that. You know, uh, I don't know. You could take some of those up on a hill and you could make your own little observation. <laughs> I've used binoculars that with the same power as those old Navy binoculars. They aren't super strong. They have an amazing field of view, though. There's a spot on Mulholland Drive where um, you can famously see all of Los Angeles. It's um, at the end of Ventura Boulevard if you're ever in L.A., in the L.A. area. <laughs> You just literally on when Ventura turns into Vineland, you make a right up Mulholland Drive. It's not even hard to find. But um, that is a place where I would love to have a pair of binoculars. Because that's another place where you can see the mountains, the desert, and the ocean. It's kind of like the Getty. You can mm. see you can see the desert, the ocean, and the mountains all in the same breath. Because mm. we have crazy topography here. I've used those before in CFB Esquimalt, Canada, sea base, west coast. I watched a ship go over the edge. Do you know what? When I was surfing in San Francisco at the end of Golden Gate Park, you're kind of in this really weird bay, and the ships look like they're going to crash into a mountain. But they're going around it. It's the craziest thing. You're sitting there and you're like, is that an optical illusion? But it's so far. The ship is so far out. It's going, you know, it's going around it because you're in a bay. Do you think the other, the other four 1950s think the Bismarck films were lying? <laughs> no. Okay. So if you really want to get into it, much like my furry head. Um, Walmart used to have bins. So I bought my, I bought the Eagle in a bin and I can't even describe how much older my parents are than I am. So I grew up watching Sink the Bismarck. I grew up watching the AMC channel with my parents. So I'm obsessed with older movies. So Walmart used to have five buck bins where it had all the Ors Orson Welles movies. I watched Orson Welles, The Stranger, yesterday. <laughs> and um, I became obsessed with buying those. And if I couldn't find it in my house, I'd just buy another one. And then my dad would be like, hey, I just bought Boris Korloff, The Devil Commands. And I'd be like, oh, I have two copies. Inappropriate thumb. <laughs> so it just became a thing where um i became obsessed with those old movies and you know what they don't sell them anymore so i have a ton of those old movies now <laughs> my walmart still has the cheap dvd bins mine doesn't i'm so mad as somebody who's a movie watcher and that's why i bought the matrix and alf <laughs> you're missing out it's because um, they don't sell them like they used to. It's one of those things. If people wanted it, they would sell them. But we just don't have that here. 
I, I, and it's not like I was just buying black and whites. Like I have Robin Hood men in tights, every Leslie Nielsen movie, like you name it. I have it. I mean, were people really not buying them or? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It's one of those, they, they just, I don't know. And it's not just my Walmart. Cause I go to, uh, well, I, in my town, there's four of them cause we're crazy in America. <laughs> But it's in most of them. And I recently went to one out in the valley and it they didn't have a bin either. I watched Star Trek the Motion Picture yesterday. I kind of want to watch Wrath of Khan. Now, see, if you owned it, you could binge watch it. <laughs> I've been to Walmart since Christmas. And before that was a Christmas before that. I wish I could say that I went to Walmart today. And you know what? I'm going to um, oopsie shame myself. I bought this today. <laughs> so something gray will be made soon. <laughs> what kind of fabric is that? It's um thick and stretchy. <laughs> Did you buy polyester? I'm going to make pants. I'm going to make some pants out of those. All I can, the second you said polyester, I... I heard, huh, 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 <laughs> staying alive, staying alive. See, if you make pants out of that, you'll get swamp crotch. <laughs> Do you like this channel? Well, which is the name of my next punk band? <laughs> oh, I let me see if I'm subscribed. Hold on, let me hit the button and see if I'm uh, subscribed to him. Oh, I'm not. Thank you, Kilroy. Thank you. I am subscribed right now. Perfect. All notifications. I need new stuff to watch. And I'm obsessed with like old grindhouse movies. All like I like old school um Hollywood from the 1920s up. I can't get into silent films like I used to. I don't have the attention span. <laughs> but I'm a uh, um I hardly go to Walmart. I have Paramount Plus, dude. Okay. So, as, um, so do I, and so does somebody else that I absolutely love and respect. But what happens when they take said movie off? Mm hmm. Like, I love, this is kind of blasphemy in the um, Trek world, but I love all the Chris Pine movies. I've seen, I own them, I've seen them a million times. Sometimes they take them off of Paramount Plus. And if I can't hear the Beastie Boys and Star Trek in the same movie, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> Please tell me you've seen the Chris Pine version. I have. I okay, have. good. Okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is, like, um, it's better to physically have the movie because one day they could remove it and be like, oh, we're only going to show it from November until February from now on. It seems like whenever I go to watch something streaming that I know was there before, it's suddenly not available. It drives me crazy. As someone who, who owns a ton of movies, it drives me crazy. Watch Netflix. All movies are really old. See, but Netflix is not what it used to be. Okay, I have this really weird movie with the guy who was in the original V. He plays a space captain. I have it on VHS. He goes to this weird planet and he meets this crazy doctor and it's Brian Cranston. And then he goes to this other planet and he meets this other guy and it's Robert Picardo. Oh, I will see when... They fold my arms for the final time in my tomb with all my stuff. <laughs> that movie will be folded between my arms. It's so rare. I've never seen it on um, Netflix, on anything. I got to remember. It's, it's, uh, um, what I'm saying is like, I'm into really weird off B movies and th that whole genre is disappearing. Because of streaming, because of Netflix. Like I like I said, I watched Orson Welles, The Stranger, yesterday. How many people can say they've even seen that movie? Or I'm obsessed with the movie um, On the Beach with Gregory Peck. Can you just watch that right now on Netflix? 
I don't know. That movie has such a powerful message. It's about nuclear war, and I feel like they should show it to every generation. <laughs> The best depiction of Victorian era department stores I remember. In what? In Life with Father? What, what is this depiction? I believe so. Mm. I've never seen that one. Did you watch Mr. Selfridge? No. I watched the first like couple seasons, but I didn't I didn't um finish it. There's so many shows like I um, when I say I was younger, I was watching Absolute Fabulous and um, what's her name called her daughter Pram Face. And I made patches that said Pram Face. I called myself. It's basically you're pushing around a pram, you know, like, oh, look at Pram Face. Like you have a baby. She was making fun of her for having a baby. And I literally was Pram Face. I didn't know that was a television show in the UK. I oh. watch it. <laughs> but if it wasn't for that reference, I wouldn't even have known. And I walk around with patches that say pram face. <laughs> I have a jacket that says pram face that I wear. And I can always tell someone from the UK because they're like, can I ask you a question? Because they're always polite. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, do you know what that means? <laughs> oh. Mrs. Selfridge is, is one I would like to watch. Only Selfridge I know is the ultra expensive department store in Britain. <laughs> it's about the guy who started the ultra expensive department store. Oh. Old school Netflix. You would order a film and they would literally send it to you DVD, DVD by post. Kids don't yeah. know how they're... I... <laughs> I had this conversation with my son the other day because I didn't realize that my entire red box experience and everything was before he was born. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, it dawned on me. I was like, let me tell you about the olden days, <laughs> literally 15 years ago for me, <laughs> but he's 14, you know, so he doesn't have a reference. Yeah. But I was still renting them all the way up into like 2013. They there was um I had a friend who was Norwegian and we hung out all the time. And by her condo was a red box. Man, we lived off of that thing. And the net the Netflix had a had a um had a box too. Huh. We lived off of those things. That's when she was like, um, I want to watch this movie um, called Frozen. And I had never, and keep in mind, she's 10 years older than me. We were not children. And I was like, oh, okay, I've never seen it. She fell asleep. And I had a moment with that Let It Snow song. Still to this day. <laughs> Still to this day, I had a moment. Uh, All right. We've that been... song for the next week. We've been going for four hours. This one mm -hmm. has been a super Monday night. Shabla we have shablammed. We have gone around Jupiter Station twice. Three I'm times. Officially land this thing. Do dog is going to go out and have a full day. It is morning in the U. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's past eleven. It's like past. It's seven forty-five over there mm. in the morning. Or something in that realm. Oh boy. <laughs> Commodore 64 and tell him the deal. <laughs> Between Ottawa and Montreal, there are DVD and VHS rental places still operating. I've said this many times. There's one in my town. It's because um, this woman, that's where I bought all my old 1980s am anime uh, VHSs from. She sells all her old VHSs and um, she's a notary republic. She has a UPS store, and um, I think she's also a tailor. <laughs> she does oh, not goodness. mess around, but she's been in the same place for over 35 years. Wow, yeah, and rent's high. You, you you used to do four hours every night. I know I'm in my I'm in my my old Elvis, I'm in my 1970s Elvis phase right now. <laughs> uh all right. Well, 
I want to thank everybody. This has been absolutely amazing. This was definitely a spring break um, stream because I can't do this every Monday. Because <laughs> what happens, I, I drink a gang of coffee. I get all excited and I will be up. Well, I have laundry to do. I'll be up for a while after this. But I want to thank everybody who's who's uh, who stopped by. Anyone who watches this monstrosity of a stream. If you've made it this far in the rewatch, I thank you. <laughs> Gilroy, Dog, Alibaba, Joy, everybody who stopped by, all the new friends, old friends, everyone in between. I want to absolutely thank you. And you're not hallucinating. Yes, I do look like a Star Trek doctor. I need to get a, a insignia on this right now. I'll be back at it on wednesday i hope everybody enjoys their evening morning wherever you are um pause and assemble do you have anything you'd like to show no nothing for me today i absolutely thank you for being on my show thank you are you the greatest co-pilot that i could ask for oh, i will i absolutely appreciate everybody i hope everybody um has a good night i'll see you on wednesday like i always say reinforce your streams I'm tired. Hold on. Let's let's try that again. Okay. Reinforce All right. your streams. Okay. Ah. Reinforce your streams. Be yourself. And I will definitely, definitely see you next time.